Well, this will be a adventurous stream. Hopefully you guys can hear me. Make sure to uh, type in the chat saying the sounds all good and clear, because I'm not exactly a regular streamer, so I always anticipate shit to go wrong. But anyway, we're live. Hopefully you can see a background of some Maserati MC12 GT1 cars, as well as a Microsoft Edge tab. We are on, on about a 15 second delay, so yeah, I'll have the chat up here in the corner and just pray that everything works. Decibels on the mic can be dropped, otherwise you're good. Yeah, like, I run a shitty mic. I'll uh, pull it down here just a bit. Try that for a change. Yeah, that looks good on the levels. Coming through loud and clear. Okay, so... Again, I would prefer to make sim racing videos and sim racing content and real racing content, but like this is this is a very big problem. Uh, obviously, for those who don't know, but I'm assuming everyone knows at this point, there's a guy in the sim racing community out of Georgia who is like stalking and harassing a whole bunch of people. He's had some sort of psychotic break, and it's becoming a pretty serious problem. He's going after a lot of different people, uh, and seems to be very vindictive. Uh, I don't know whether it's like schizophrenia feeling it or uh, Paranoid Personality Disorder, those are the two primary candidates. But it's resulted in a mess. The guy's messed up a lot of people's personal lives uh, because a lot of agencies that could have stopped him earlier uh, when this was all first kicking off several years back didn't. In fact, a lot of people ended up defending for this guy and it's resulted in a really ugly situation in the sim racing community in which basically anyone this guy comes across, he ends up stalking them. Uh, and not in you know the kind of meme stalking or, oh, he... he he said a bad word on my Facebook page, or he said mean things to me on YouTube comments. No, I'm talking like actual stalking that could probably get him sent to jail uh, uh, and, and put away for quite a while. Uh, he is facing uh, a, just a, a pretty vast array of criminal charges from aggravated stalking to battery to random domestic violence issues uh, in relation to his girlfriend, and, and or ex-girlfriend, I should say, and there's probably more coming down the pipeline as people or the law enforcement ag agencies discover more about him. I mean, he's mentioned in some YouTube videos that he uses food stamps or gives away food stamps to his friends. I forget which one it is, which could be a felony. Uh, and he's probably going back to jail within the uh, within within the next couple of weeks uh, because some of his bond conditions state he is uh, not to be posting about his ex-girlfriend on social media, and he just doesn't give a shit about doing that. So every time he posts a video like that, it violates... His, uh, his bond conditions, and it's it's resulted in a mess, a really big fucking mess, but uh, that girl down in Georgia is not the only one he's pursuing. He's been pers he's been pursuing, uh, uh, like, his, his high school teacher, multiple high school teachers of his, his, he's been pursuing this guy named Rhett McBride, he's been pursuing myself, he now has a fixation on NASCAR content creators such as Black Flags Matter, otherwise known as Darian Gilliam, based out of Las Vegas, he's been going after David Land, uh, he's been going after Jarrett Lundberg. He's been going after Danny Baldwin. Basically, this guy's stalking, like, basically everyone he knew from sim racing or just, like, the NASCAR content creator sphere. So the next question becomes, okay, how do you deal with that and, like, gather evidence to show that to the police? Because what this guy is doing is a felony. Uh, stalking, at least in Georgia, falls under the criminal code of 16590. Uh, and it doesn't even require violent threats to be made. It just requires... A repeated pattern of unwanted or just generally creepy contact. Uh, the first charge is a misdemeanor. The second charge, or or like the second time a person gets charged with it, or if it's part of a pattern of harassment, is a felony. Uh, it's a lot of time in jail. Uh, not to mention like any other charges that may come up in the meantime. For example, if you uh, if you make threats to hurt someone online and you can reasonably carry out those threats, that's not stalking, that's uttering threats, that's a separate charge, and it kind of snowballs into all these different, like, like, uh, like niche charges that all, the average person basically doesn't know about, right? Uh, hopefully that kind of makes sense to you. So basically, what do you do when this is happening to you? For example, like, what should Darian Gilliam do? What should I do? What should... Uh, this is going to kind of go off topic here, but, like, if you've got a friend who's a sex worker on OnlyFans and she's being creeped on by some guy... Uh, who's, like, chasing after her and has got all her, like, info and knows where she lives and stuff like that. Like, what should they do? What should you be doing if someone is stalking you either online or off? Uh, what 
what kind of evidence should you gather, how should you organize it, what should it look like when it's all put together and ready to present to the police, such as in my situation. Uh, like, how do you do this? Because a lot of people have never been in this situation before. They'll probably never be in this situation. Like I said, uh, the chances of this occurring are so st statistically rare that not a lot of people know what to do in this situation, and it probably won't happen to them. It may happen to, like, a friend of a friend. But you should know how to do it because it's really important because basic investigation skills that you have uh, can really aid police in getting something done about this person, whoever's chasing after you, uh, especially because you'll notice law enforcement, you know, aren't us. A lot of them aren't millennials. They're, they're you know, their 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s. They're not very good with computers. We are. We're pretty fucking good at computers. We know how to save shit. We know how to archive shit. We know how to keep, like, logs of certain stuff, uh, which means that it the onus really falls on you to present all of your, like, stocking evidence on a silver platter. Next question, where did I learn how to do this? Not through Jason. Unfortunately, when I was younger, I had to do this for someone else. I was with a girl who was not mentally stable. Not the same disorder as Jason, but similar. Uh, she did a lot of the stuff Jason's doing, uh, to me, just on a lesser scale. So I had to build a similar folder to this, and that's where I learned how or what the correct process is and what should be documented and what shouldn't. And thankfully, unlike Jason, she actually ended up getting better. We talked a few years back. She seems to be doing a lot better. Uh, kind of apologized for like all the shit she put me through, but I had to build, basically I had to build a folder like this before. So when Jason came along and started really going crazy and started contacting my employer and making these crazy videos day after day after day, uh, I knew how to do it. And and for years I was really upset by her behavior, and now I'm actually quite thankful because it it has prepared me for this moment, which is just like not what I expected at all. But like whatever, thanks Brittany, I guess. So again. You are being stalked. And in this case, I am being stalked by this dude from iRacing. And now I'm forced to contact law enforcement and be like, Hey, I have a serious problem here. So, obviously when you go to the cops, you can't just like go and start ranting. Like They want to see evidence, they want to see it organized. Uh, and they want to be able to, to sift through it and be like, Okay, we kind of understand the scope of what's going on. We can try and get something done about it. This is a folder the police in Georgia have. The police in Edmonton have this as well. Again, I'm really not sure why it's taken so long to act on it. The only thing I've really been told in terms of like a finite answer is that they can't decide what jurisdiction it falls under, which is a common problem that's going to occur in any sort of cyber stalking situation. Uh, because I live all the way in fucking Edmonton, Canada. It's cold. It's minus 50 outside, or it's pretty close to it. This dude is in Georgia. Uh, and because of that, neither police department I've talked to has really been able to say, like, we're going to take this on which has caused a massive clusterfuck and why this has gone on a lot longer than it should have. I was told, basically when I reported this first back in April, that if Jason lived in the same city as me, like, this would have been done in a month. There would have been a restraining order in place, he probably would have been charged, it would have been game over. Uh, in Canada especially, there is a defamation law. Again, it's not a civil thing, it's it's a legitimate law where, where some of Jason's actions towards me could have got him charged pretty much immediately. Uh, and again, this whole thing could have been done in a month, but because it's cross-border and an international thing, neither police department really knows who should be pressing charges and taking on like the weight of this case and, and taking action against it. Uh, so it has resulted in back and forth between Edmonton police, Georgia police, as well as the various lawyers I get steered to and then blow a bunch of money on, only to be told, uh, actually, yeah, you need to just go back to the cops and this is all criminal, and it's, it's a fucking mess. But basically, I have done my end of the part by building... Uh, a giant folder of, of all the or evidence organized, you know, so people can go through it. So, I've done my part. Alex asks, what's your take on Jason's take that NASCAR drivers ignore the fans? I believe their days are stacked with meetings and appearances at the track. Can't attend to every fan. He's simply wrong. Honestly, Jason just gets, like, schizophrenic. That's that's it. Like, he's, he's off in his own little world. He interprets reality completely different than we do. Uh, a good example of this is when he called into Dave Moody two days ago. You know, Dave Moody basically told him to go fuck himself in the most polite way possible. And then Jason made, like, five or six videos where he, like, didn't even address that he got told off and seemed to have, like, a completely different recollection of the conversation. Like, completely different. You know, like, this guy is going into Kroger and is thinking people are following him around and just throwing money at him, which is very obviously not true. And is, like, completely certain that this is happening. So, like, anything this guy says regarding, like... The anti-gay stuff, the anti-trans stuff, uh, some of the stuff he says about like racism, the stuff he says about NASCAR drivers, especially the shit like, uh, oh, Amy Ryman is getting pimped out to black guys. Like, it's obviously not true. It comes from just him being delusional and like sitting and tripping balls. 
and that may or may not be assisted by him potentially being on like court ordered medication which he's mentioned on his blog so like do not listen to anything this guy says do not take it even remotely seriously uh even when it comes down to like instances of bullying or when he claims people from back in nascar all three leagues used to bully him don't listen to it like there's no way it's true uh, my favorite claim he's made is that people used to make, like, swastika cars to taunt him because he was Jewish. And, like, I used to browse NN Racing back in the day. It used to be called NASCAR Net and, like, download, like, thousands of add-on cars for NASCAR 03. Uh, I never saw swastika cars. Ne like, never. It was pretty much exclusively, like, Dale Earnhardt tribute cars. And, like, oh, like, this field filler attempted to qualify for a race at Darlington in 2004, so I made his car. Like, no one was doing this to Jason. Uh, ninety nine percent of his claims are bullshit. Even when he talks about like things from his life on his blog, such as I think he had he owned a street stock for a summer. Uh, he he blows up these stories into like really weird tangents where like he claims some dude from the audience walked down and said, you know, NASCAR is not for you and you need to do something else with your life. Like there's no way this happened. It's just it's ridiculous. The guy's a schizo. And yes, as uh, Alex, you mentioned, it's it's word salad. It, it's it's pure unfiltered mental illness, and this is what a lot of people don't understand. Especially because a lot of social media campaigns try and present mental illness as like every single thing under the mental illness banner is just a mild case of depression, and it's easy to treat it by just you know showing patience and understanding. No, there's really different tiers of mental illnesses, and you're seeing, like, you're seeing the top tier shit when shit hits the fan and, like, families are getting affected by it and, like, children are in the mix. It's really fucking bad. He's literally the sim racing equivalent of Chris Chan, like David Land last said. Yeah, and that's why people are, like, finding this kind of interesting, because, like... YouTube's weird. People will fall down rabbit holes of, like, what's Chris Chan up to? Or what's Oniason up to? Or Onision. That's his name. Uh, what are they up to? Because they're just, like, weird figures, so people pay attention to them. But anyway, on with the show. Uh, so this is what my Google Drive looks like. Again, this is what the cops have. Uh, hopefully you guys can all see this, and it's somewhat legible. I know I have to stream in an ultra-wide format, and it kind of squishes things a bit. But anyways, I have everything uploaded on a Google Drive. Uh, this is just under my personal name and again I send the cops or just anyone who needs to see this this link uh, so what you do is you start out by making various folders to kind of categorize the various means of harassment so I'll just give you a brief overview here first folder I have and a folder you should make again if you're in the situation which I have to uh, is to basically outline when this first started so I've had that written down as folder zero uh, which is just Jason's obsession with me, begins in 2013 after I beat him in a video game. So that kind of shows law enforcement or whoever's looking at this, whether it be a lawyer or whatever. Uh, when did this all start? When did Jason first either make contact with me or determine that like he was going to chase after me? So that's its own folder. Uh, I have him asking for my personal details. That's a, a specific folder. In this case, he just asked for my address, and we'll see what's in there. I'll go through these in detail afterwards. Uh, then I have a folder for just the physical threats against me, which again, in some states, that's required for stalking. So I've made sure that's its own different folder. I also have a folder, uh, weird death threats from friends of Jason's, because again, this guy was at one point a very small time influencer. He had a ring of people around him. So there's a folder specifically for other people who aren't Jason making threats towards me. Then there's folder three, which is just miscellaneous blog posts and YouTube videos and comments about me. So this encompasses everything from just like shit he would post on his blog to like creepy weird videos to like him making like burner Twitter accounts, that sort of thing. Uh, Jason tries to get me fired from my job. I've gone over this several times this year. Jason did write my employer a uh, bunch of fake, you know, bullshit claims saying I drove him to suicide and was cruel to kids. And just all kinds of weird shit got him arrested on false charges. He wrote that too. I was working for a company by Slightly Mad Studios at the time. They made the Project Car series. I had done contract work for them for several years at that point. Uh, so his videos and rants that he aimed at them and then celebrated on YouTube, that's its own specific folder because, again, in Canada, what he did falls under defamation law. If he lived in Canada, he would be arrested for that folder alone or what's in that folder alone. And then 4A, of course, I have email correspondence with my HR department at work showing I've lost my job. Sorry, I clicked on that. Uh, so I have that saved. And then, this is important, uh, if you do lose your job because of a stalker, 
uh, you need to be able to show how much you've actually lost from them financially for losing your job. Does that make sense? Uh, because that allows, once they're finally charged or once you take civil action against them, you can apply for what's called restitution where the, the, the perpetrator will be forced to repay you financially for uh, basically how he's fucked up your life. In civil, you can, you can pretty much just ask for you know, crazy amounts of money, $1 million, $2 million, and then the court will kind of reduce that and make a certain you know, compromise. Or if you go the criminal route, they will basically mathematically calculate exactly uh, how much you've lost uh, and, uh, and, and instruct the, the, uh, the felon or the perpetrator to pay you. So obviously I have a folder that basically has internal work documents in there saying, hey, this is how long I would have expected to work with them because we were working on this project for X amount of time. Does that make sense? Uh, and obviously what fueled Jason to contact my employer uh, with bogus claims was saying I drove him to suicide. But because Jason has posted so much on his blog and so much on YouTube, he's actually contradicted his own suicide statement. So he's written my old employer a bunch of crazy shit saying it was Austin Oganowski alone who drove him to suicide. But I found on his blog several times where he admits that, hey, he's actually been suicidal since he was like 12. And that he blamed Domino's Pizza for his suicide attempt and, and Mackenzie Gordon, his ex-girlfriend, for a suicide attempt. So that's all in there to show that, hey, his claims actually are defamatory. That's really important because you need to prove in any sort of defamation situation or like a stalking situation that what this guy is saying is, is bullshit. And that's in that folder. Folder six, we have account breaches. So this is an interesting one. Uh, after, you know, Jason got me, got me turfed from SMS and I was, you know, unemployed throughout the summer and just like racing and like sleeping and crying myself to sleep every night. Uh, he didn't actually end there. Uh, there were a, I believe six different account breaches where he like got into like my Amazon or my OnlyFans cause I'm a single guy. Let's be honest here. Uh, and like started making purchases. So that constitutes his credit card fraud. So that's another charge in that folder alone. Uh, and it's very important to document if someone like that does get into your account, uh, a lot of sites will send you automated messages saying that, like, hey, there has been suspicious activity in your account. Uh, you need to not only screenshot those, but you need to send a support ticket in and be like, hey, can you investigate this activity? Can you get me this person's IP? So all of that is in there, and it's it's pretty extensive. Uh, folder 7, and again, this folder 7 is basically because Jason cannot stop posting online. Uh, in some videos, as well as blog posts, he's mentioned that his parents have been actively trying to keep him away from technology. So in terms of uh, getting criminal charges pressed or taking the civil road, uh, there's a chance that Jason is special needs, and that's just like his status, which means the onus for keeping this guy out of trouble would be his parents. Does that make sense? Uh, like if you do have a child that's special needs, you can get something similar to either guardianship or conservatorship. It's kind of what Britney Spears has had for the longest time, where like her parents were in control of her finances and major business decisions. They'd give her some leeway, of course, but that's kind of what that is. So if Jason, you know, goes out and does something really horrible, uh, they can theoretically say like, well, why weren't the parents supervising him? So I have an entire folder that basically shows that his parents were actively trying to keep him off the internet, but they were also being very lazy at it. Does that make sense? Folder 7A, and this is an important one too. Uh, other iRacers were going to Jason's parents, contacting them and being like, hey, your son's engaging in a really fucked up behavior. Can you do something about it? Like, this is concerning. And they responded by blocking him. So it shows that they knew about it. They were warned about it. Third parties, you know, other than myself, were going to them uh, to say that like, hey, uh, you need to like do something about this right now. Because this is not safe. There's people getting fucked with. Uh, you need to just you need to step in and like find a way to to basically get them off the internet. And they read it and deleted it. Folder eight. This is a pretty fun folder. We'll get to that later on in the stream. Uh, Jason very obviously had a burner YouTube account that he'd used to just spam my YouTube videos. It was very obviously him. The dialect was him. He was saying shit uh, that that made no sense. Thinking he was like stumping me. It's pretty funny. That's that's a funny folder. Uh, folder 9. I love this folder. 
admitting to sending harassing emails towards others, encouraging people to do the same. So this kind of builds off what I've shown in folder 4, 4A and 4B, where, hey, this crazy guy was sending my work emails trying to get me fired. In folder 9, I show that, hey, this wasn't just exclusive to me. This was an established pattern that he did to eight or nine different people. So in the event that, again, the cops start taking pretty serious action regarding this or this goes into some sort of legal suit, I can say that, hey, like, you know, if Jason tries to counter saying that, oh, it's technically Austin Hoganowski stalking me, I can say that, no, actually, he's been doing this to 10 different people, and it's basically whoever he comes across throughout the day, which, again, is pretty huge. So instead of, you know, as one website who wrote an article on this, I think a year ago, wrote that this is just like a case of ongoing beef, I can say that, no, he's actually gone after all these other people as well. And then finally, folder 10, defamatory claims. These are just small YouTube clips from longer videos of his where I have him, you know, I've recorded his very basic, you know, defamatory statements towards me. The, the outright lies. The Austin Naganowski got me arrested on false charges. Austin Naganowski is schizophrenic and hears voices. Austin Naganowski is gay. It's just a list of those. So that, again, it's edited, cut down from his, you know, longer format rants into just piecemeal sentences where he makes very specific defamatory statements. And that's basically just so you can walk into a lawyer, uh, a lawyer's office, or a, uh, when, when talking with a police officer, I can just say, look, go to folder 10. These are all, you know, his worst videos, his worst clips. This is the kind of shit he's saying about me. It's not this guy, you know, that I have beef with. It's this guy saying legitimately crazy shit, you know, that he's cruel to kids, that he got him arrested on false charges, that sort of thing. Is that, is that a good enough primer? I think that's everything. And again, Mr. Jackhammer, uh, everyone has this. It's a matter of, hey, we don't really know what to do because you guys live so far apart and we're not sure if the Georgia police should take action or the Edmonton police should take action or really what to do. There's a lot of people with just their hands up in the air because they never expected something like this to happen. This would all have been taken care of if we all lived in the same city. Uh, Straight Tail, did you record the video where he names his ex by name? Uh, no, she does. So, I'm not the only one who, like, documents all this shit. Every person that Jason's fucked with has generally a folder like this. So, like, Mackenzie has a, a Google Drive where it's just videos he's made mentioning her. Uh, Joni Axon, the teacher he harasses, has a folder where it's just stuff Jason has made where he harasses her. And then, <coughs> sorry... My folder, it's just stuff that Jason has made where he harasses me. So there, in total, I believe there's five or six people. The FBI have definitely sent in a tip because I was encouraged to do that. So, like, everyone has this. And again, w with the extent of it, I really don't know how nothing's been done. Which is just, at this point, I'm extremely frustrated, and that's kind of why I'm streaming this, is to really just vent. Because, like, the, the amount of shit I've saved that he should have been charged for already, and this should have been done, he should have been charged, sentenced, you know... That working on working on restitution or something. This this should have been over already. So I don't know how I can approach law enforcement with something this extensive and no one cares. Or it's just people throwing their hands up in the air and being like, well, we don't really know what to do because we're not sure what jur jurisdiction it falls under. Which, you know, this this should have been a conversation that lasted a week, and then someone finally should have said, okay, we're going to take it up. Not eight months. Ridiculous. It started in April. It's now January of 2022, and we're still debating which jurisdiction it falls under. Fucking retarded. So, starting at the top, folder zero, Jason's obsession begins with me in 2013 after I beat him in a video game. So he has, and I'm not going to play every single video, he has a clip where he says, there's something dark about Austin Ogunoski, and he brings up a race in uh, 2013. I found that exact race. I have screenshots of that race. Hopefully the, the photos don't take forever to load, so I won't try and have all of them. But the race he's talking about is an iRacing race in Richmond that occurred April 27th, 2013, which means this guy has been after me for close to nine years. I guess he just had some sort of schizo meltdown because I won the race and he finished like sixth. So this kind of shows the police officers or whoever ends up looking at this that, like, this guy has been fixated on me for close to a decade. Basically basically dating back to when I was a teenager. This has nothing to do with, oh, you criticized his Simbrig and he got upset. No, like, he accidentally admitted in a video that it goes on a lot longer. So anyways, here's the results of the race. I've made a, I've made a separate video on this. Uh, I finished P1. This was like a, a 2 a.m. split 
NASCAR iRacing Series race. Jordan Worth, uh, if you're an iRacer, you know that name, uh, came second. Jason Jacoby, he ends up running fourth about six seconds back. So, again, it was just a fuck-off race, one of many I've run on iRacing. We hardly saw each other on the track, and he was just having a schizo meltdown and decided whoever won that race uh, was possessed by a demon. So, this this whole harassment campaign he has against me could have also been, uh, you know, it could have been directed at Jordan Worth. It could have been directed at Eric Burke. What about Zolt Nagy or, or Neil Heckins? Jason could have chased after any one of these people, and it just happened to be me. No, this wasn't bottom, or yeah, Jordan Jordan Worth is, is the bottom split guy. Uh, but that was top split, like a 2 a.m., basically an Aussie split race. So, folder one, Jason asked for my address. So, he did message me on Facebook in the spring of 2020, just sending me schizo shit. So, he asks for my address. I want to go to the craziest, most demented place possible, he writes, or the worst place on earth. So, I gave him my ex-girlfriend's address because I'm not stupid. <laughs> just to see what he'd do with it, and thankfully nothing happened. Thankfully he didn't, like, send a bomb to their house or anything like that, because that'd be, that'd be a whole bunch of shit. But obviously, like, when you deal with people like this, do not give them your contact info, but give them, like, fake info to see what they'll do with it. So, yeah, my man's asking for my address. Austin's I rating is, like, 3.9k. It used to be as high as 5, but that was in, like, 2012 or 2013 when, like, uh, <clears throat> when, like, 5k, like, meant something. So, yeah... When they start asking, like, for your address and shit like that, make sure you save that. Again, I fed him a fake address, because he's stupid. I wanted to see what he'd do with it. I don't live there. Don't freak out. That's... If you look at a map, it's, like, geometrically the farthest point from my house in the city. It's just... It just happened to be where she lived. So that worked out nice. Jason makes physical threats, threats against me. Folder number two. So these are all... These are all clips where Jason makes, like, direct physical or, like, alludes to physical threats. And, and again, it's just single sentence or, like, a couple sentences out of, like, four-minute videos. Because no, nobody's going to sit down and watch, like, four minutes of schizo rambling about charity water. But we'll go through one here. Some people need to be put to rest. And, again, they're all really little clips. These load a lot quicker on Firefox, but... You know, I'm trying my best. Some people really need to be put to rest. All right, see you guys. Hopefully you guys heard of that. I'm trying my best, but some people need to be put to rest. Uh, yeah. That's uh, kind of alluding to I should be killed. Come on, man. Uh, do what's right, tear down Osnogonoski. Mm -hmm. Do what's right. Tear down, the, tear down Austin Ogunowski. I dare you, everyone on social media, come against him. These are all nice and short. They seem to be loading fairly quick now. The shirtless vids really get me. Yeah, those are those are weird. A curse upon all of you. Especially Austin Ogunowski. You better, all of you better work together to bring him down. All of you. All of you. Yeah, work together to bring Austin down. What does that mean? Are you implying that I should be assaulted physically? So that's in the, the physical threat folder. Uh, this is a good one, too. Uh, death threats from friends of Jason's. He was, according to court documents, involuntarily committed to a mental health facility in the late summer, early fall of 2020. And I believe he met a couple people in there. So one of them ended up taking to YouTube, and it was a guy who, like, his entire YouTube channel is playing with wrestling action figures. So he ended up making a video, like, saying I should be killed. Guy's name is John Agnelli. So my argument is that, like, if he's able to do this, I'll pause this for a second, if he's able to get other people to do this, like, who's to say he won't find some schizo in Edmonton to come after me, right? Like, I know that's kind of far-fetched, but at the same time, it's not. 
Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. And today's video, oh hell, it's gonna be long, bitch. I only got 12 minutes to fucking do this video. So let's go. First things first, I want to give a shout out to Jason Jacoby. Because I told him yesterday, I was doing this video. I even posted a little snippet saying I was going to post this video. You know, we're in sick clothes. I don't give a fuck. Okay, now we get down to the needy three. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, Mackenzie Leanne Gordon and Austin Ogonoski. First off, Mackenzie, you are a bad son of a bitch. You ruined Jason. You took his baby. And you even took his fucking fire suit from him. Why would you do that? You're a fucking monster. Ah! And Austin, Argonoski, you think that going after my friend will make you stronger? Oh, man. He's coming after you. So am I. So it's two versus everyone who turned their backs on my friend Jason. Now we're going to Darian. David Lane. Eric E. Oh, no. Try to think. Smoke Carbon. Smoke Carbon. Watch out, buddy. I'm telling you right now. Oh, you're gonna get burned, bruh. Darian! You think Jason's a monster? No, he's not. Cause I'm with him. I make him stronger. Every single fucking day. David Lane. You think it you think I'm posting bad shit? On on NASCAR? Jason doesn't even fucking like you. Smoke Carbon. Darian. You think Jason's a fucking psychopath? A monster? He's not. There's some other channels I can't even think of. Everybody else who they're fucking turning their backs on him will fucking die. That's a death threat. Enjoy your charges. They were, they're still hating Jason, but they will not be alive. They will... Oh, that's another death threat. ...will be driven down to the ground. Dead! Third death threat. Y'all fucking hear me? Dead! Fourth. I'm saying this right now. We need... Have, we need Jason... To get back to where he was before this situation happened. Mackenzie, give Jason his fire suit back right now. I'm trying so hard not to laugh, but like, what the fuck? I know you might be watching this video soon. Yep. Jason. Yep. But I'm telling you right now, Jason. I'm here for you, bro. I'm here. <clears throat> Let me just tell you something, Darian. When you get on my boy's bad side, he will make sure you'll be dead. You ain't gonna be alive. Death threat five? Is it five or six? Austin Ogonoski, I'm calling you out, bitch. Okay. Because what you did to my boy Jason, you're getting it now, bruh. Okay. He's going to get you fired. Yeah, oh, well, you're right about that. Project Cars, bitch. It's called Slightly Mad Studios, but okay. Can someone, like, screenshot that and make a meme? I mean, like... His video's been really terrible up to that point, but that's a solid stance. That's a power stance.
Fuck you, Darren, David Land. What did David Land do? Austin Ogunowski. There you go. Mackenzie Lee and Gordon. Y'all are fucking son of a bitches that fucking hate my friend. Okay. And all I just want to say right now is justice for Carson. He needs to be with Jason, not Mackenzie. I very much like the, the, the flower wallpaper in the background. Like, the juxtaposition between angry autistic wrestling fan and, like, very 1960s, 1970s home decor is just, like, immaculate. Like, you couldn't script shit better than this. Alright, I'm out! So, yeah, that goes in the weird death threats from Friends of Jason folder. I want that guy charged, too. Uh, folder 3. Jason continues to make weird videos, blog posts, tweets, and comments about me. So there's basically everything uncategorized. Uh, I've sorted some of them by date, but, like, there's a lot of shit in here. Uh, he became very active on his blog in the fall uh, of this year. Uh, made a ton of posts about me. It was pretty much, like, every second or third day. So I'll just pick at random here. Uh, what did he post on 1021? Again, I'm sorry it doesn't take, or it takes too long to load. Uh, Microsoft Edge is, Microsoft Edge is not very nice. Uh, so this is what he posted on 10-21-2021, uh, Psalm 109. Uh, he loves his Psalms. Psalm 109 is, he actually interprets it the wrong way. It's basically like wishing God would bring uh, karma to your enemies as opposed to wishing to their downfall directly. But, so it's kind of inappropriate here, because Jason was trying to force God's hand, and believes that because God, because I did get fired, that means he's communicating with God. I don't know, it's really weird. I've had to do a lot of religious reading. I went to a Catholic school, so some of the stuff I, like, know, or have a vague understanding of already, but, like, it's weird. Uh, what did he post... Yeah, there's a lot. I'm not going to go through all of them, but there's a lot. So, like, what did you post on 10 or 12, 5? So this would be start of December. <coughs> so he posted multiple parts of shit about me. Like, multiple blog posts about me. One after the other. He thinks Ian Bell was responsible for me getting fired, but he actually wasn't. Ian Bell was advocating for me to stay. Not to mention, Ian Bell hasn't been with SMS for several months right now. So it's very weird. So, like, he's praising the wrong person for firing me, and he's, like, thanking a person who doesn't work at the company anymore, which is just really weird. And, like, it's it's just every every three days or so he made a blog post... Being like, I'm so happy Austin got fired. Like, uh, which is the one with Gene Simmons? This is my favorite. I at least respect that he knows I'm a Kiss fan. Kiss is awesome, by the way. So again, every blog post he's made, every Twitter post he's made, is in this folder. If I basically, if I didn't know how to categorize them, I'd just be like, well, okay, it goes, it goes in folder three. Uh, my hero is slightly mad studios. Uh. To all those at SMS who are given the eyes to see the true evil and bold done to me, may God bless you for administering justice. Kiss any hopes of a good career goodbye. So does that kind of imply he's going to do this again? Because, like, I can have multiple careers, so, like, is he just going to keep doing this? And he posts a picture of Gene Simmons. My favorite Kiss member is Bruce Kulick, but that's nice. I think Gene's a loser. I'm a huge Kiss fan. Like, I, I know all the band's history. I used to post on the Kiss FAQ. I still post on the Kiss Reddit sometimes. I hate Gene. Uh, more videos. Again, these are all uh, uh, sort of by date. Uh, anytime he would upload something with my name, that got saved. So there's just tons of shit. And, like, I think you got to get the point just by seeing the volume of it. What the hell is that picture? It's Gene Simmons, my man. you got to look up who Kiss is. So they're just in the month of December alone, and then going into uh, January, there's like there's like 20 to 30 posts about me. Uh, this was back when he had his Facebook account. 
from when his like breakdown first started in the spring of 2020. Yeah, I've, I saw Kiss live in 2016 for their Freedom to Rock tour. They came to uh, Rexall Place. It was a really good show, but Paul needs to not lip sync so much. Uh, the story of Austin Naganowski, when racing with him, I always wanted the best for him. I was told seeing colors is a gift I've been given. I tried to be good to Austin, but I was afraid of what he would, what would become of him. So again, he's referencing shit. I used to run iRacing in like 2013. Like I haven't played the game for like years, basically because I'm banned. And he even mentioned this. <laughs> he became the most toxic person on iRacing, and I'm glad but sad that they banned him. Well, okay. His work only turned into bringing more eyes to iRacing. So, like, he's referencing, like, the fact that he raced with me, like, almost a decade ago on a video game. And, like, was, like, overjoyed that they banned me for criticizing their video game. Okay. I got banned for criticizing their game. I was one of the first people to... You know how all those pro drivers criticized the tire model, like, a couple years back? I was one of the first people to come out and be like, this is, this is shit. Except I did it, like, long before it was, like, a common, commonly held opinion. So they really chased me around a bit. Uh, again, there's just more videos, like... This one where he tells me he loves me. This is one of my favorite ones. And this is, this is usually the one I show people to show you how, like, off the rails he's gotten. Because, like... Yeah, so we'll Austin, see. I love you, but that's that's not my choice. You know, what I mean, I, I can only do my best, just like you can do your best. And so he loves me, but it's not his choice. Yeah, that's not stalkerish at all. Uh, anyway, he took to Twitter about two months ago. Yeah, I got permanently banned. I got a refund, uh, or for all the content I purchased. Purchased. I've uh, I use it to buy my Hans device. And then, because I got a new PC, I was able to sign up again under a fake name to avoid schizos like Jason. And then I got found out anyway, and they banned me again. iRacing really doesn't like me. I haven't gotten to the Moody call yet. Uh, so Jason came back in late October under the Twitter account NASCAR Robin Hood. Uh, and just kept tweeting schizo shit. Like, some of it's so deranged that, like, it doesn't even make sense. Uh, so he, like, ranted about me on Twitter a bunch. This was great. Like, I was in counseling, like, a counseling session while he was posting this. And, like, I got out. I turned my phone on and had, like, 20 notifications from people being like, Did you see Jason went to Twitter again? And, yeah, I did. I was falsely imprisoned because of evil people like you. He's referring to me who live in their own parents' basement. I'm that. There's nothing wrong about living with your parents, man. Like, if you have a good relationship with them, like, go for it. I was planning to move out this year if I still had my job, because, like, I had more than enough money to do so. I wouldn't mind getting a place of my own. It'd be kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, shout out to iRacing for paying for your Hans device. Yeah, it's great. So, again, uh, Twitter is great. It's used to spread God's word and tell how you lost your job for slandering a servant of God. So he believes he's, like, he believes God is is, uh, like, speaking to him directly. And there's just, there's more shit, like, the greatest online hater. Like, again, every blog post, every tweet he's made, every Facebook post about me, every, like, video that didn't really fall into any, so any sort of category is in this folder. Uh, and, and there's a lot. And, like, it's funny. And, again, I don't want to go through all of them because, like, it's just, it, uh, it goes on and on and on. This is, this is admittedly kind of a funny post. 10 17 2020, so over a year ago. There's no doubt Austin Naganowski has stalked me, so he believes everyone's after him. He's been a dog since the moment I spotted him on iRacing. Again, this is over a decade ago, or close to a decade ago. I basically never talked to him. Like, you know how iRacing is. There are guys that, like you see in every race once in a while, but it's not like you're friends with him. You're just like, oh, hey, it's that guy. I've raced with him before. I even attempted to lay down my life since his spirit was one of darkness and death upon me. Okay. My lap times would be much slower every time I would think about him. That's pretty base. That's like that's how the intimidator button works on uh, uh, NASCAR 05, isn't it? You press the B button and the guy in front of you spins out. So does that mean that's realistic? Maybe it is. 
Um, everyone said to pay him no attention, but God showed me that he was going to be my greatest enemy online. Okay, so now he believes I'm, like, sent by God to destroy him. Constant attacks brought actual NASCAR media members to my YouTube channel. Many made fun of me. Well, that's not really my fault. That's your fault. God works in mysterious ways. I believe Ogonoski is created to bring more unjust hatred to me and let God's light shine. Like, this guy thinks I've been sent by God. Light or dark hate or great. What's it going to be, Ogonoski? Okay. My enemies were created for a reason. Like, so again, all of like the just miscellaneous schizo, schizo shit is in this folder. This is this is wild. Folder four. Jason tries to get me fired from my job, claiming I drove him to suicide. Uh, so he's made four videos like this. I don't have the actual email he sent, uh, Codemasters and SMS, because they wouldn't give it to me. But I do have where he where he dictates the actual email he sent. Uh, which one do you want to see? They're all pretty bad. And then, like, three months later, he made another one encouraging other people to uh, to send those videos in, or to send in emails demanding me to be fired. Uh, I don't remember which one's the first one. I think it might be this one, though. And, yeah, this is all real. Like, this actually happened. Is that fucking Ryan Moody in here? Holy shit. Hey friends, so I am going to um, talk about the correspondence uh, I've been receiving with a very nice gentleman over at Slightly Mad Studio. So first of all, my message to him was, Dear SMS, I have been a victim of Austin Ogonoski's cyberbullying since 2016. The hateful following he brought against me drove me to a suicide attempt in 2017 in which I ran my car into a telephone pole. My face was slightly disfigured. See, I broke my nose, my nostrils messed up, cracked a tooth, got a scar under my chin. Um, anyway, I said, in which I ran my car into a telephone pole, my face was slightly disfigured and I broke three ribs and a hand. How did he find your place of work? That's actually a good question. I didn't have where I worked on my Facebook page. I had that I was a social media guy for Justin Horton Racing, which is just my, like, my, my mini stock car builder. He found me because I was listed as an employee on the official SMS website. And in the middle of last year, he brought on false charges by my ex who profusely lied well, about me. thank you for the super chat, sent to jail. Mr. Brandon. Jason getting sent to prison for 20 years will be the best proof of God I've ever seen. Uh, honestly, though, he probably won't get sent to prison. He will probably be just sent to a mental home, and then after he's finished his sentence or whatever, uh, he'll just have a ton of stipulations where, uh, like, he's not allowed to access the internet or anything like that, and it'll be a quick call to his parole officer, uh... If, if he comes back to Twitter or YouTube again, and he'll just keep getting in more and more shit. For three days, because the local police department was receiving dozens of calls based off of his videos. My life has been brought to ruins by this cyberbully, which only adds to the hurt I've faced by being bullied in the school system. I respectfully request that something be done to him, because his damaging effect on my reputation and mental well-being is felt every day. Sincerely, Jason Jacoby. And a very nice gentleman named Fernando got back to me. He said, hi, Jason. I'm Fernando. I withhold his last name. Fernando was a guy we had just hired at the time. He'd only been with us for like a month or two. And uh, basically didn't know like any of this was going on. And just assumed he was telling the truth. He never, uh, and, and this, this is probably getting into stuff I shouldn't talk about, but he never came to me directly being like, hey, Austin, some guy like... Uh, you know, uh, just email the company some crazy schizo shit about you and, like, can I have an explanation before I go to HR about this? This never happened. He just escalated it immediately. He didn't go to my immediate supervisor. He kind of fucked up handling this. I don't remember his last name, so I don't want to, like, send people after him. But, yeah, uh, they botched handling this. That's all I'm going to say. I'm here. Um, and social media and community manager for Slightly Mad Studios. I'm reaching out to you in response to the email sent to your, uh, you sent to our support page. Um, please allow me to say that I am terribly sorry that this situation has happened to you, and thank you for bringing... So again, he says, I'm terribly sorry the situation has happened to you. The guy never contacted me. The guy never contacted my supervisor. Just immediately assumed it was true and was like, oh, yeah, we'll do something about it. So that opens a lot of people up to a lawsuit. ...to our attention. The standard procedure necessary to initiate an investigation will require some more substantial evidence. 
Therefore, I respectfully need to ask that you send us some evidence that can back up your claims regarding the staff member. It can simply be screenshots of messages that clearly show the accused name or accounts being involved. Hey, this is interesting. He says, hey, we actually need some more evidence. But then he's also like, I'm so sorry this happened to you. I was never presented with any evidence. This is getting really spicy. Or public posts on social media that are relevant to the matter. I hope that you are well and safe. Please don't have... That's a good point. Support for these studios never emails anyone back, but they emailed back this clown, of course. Lel. Hesitating, contact me anytime regarding this or other relevant matters. Sincerely, Fernando. And then I um, just responded, Thank you, Fernando. Your kind response is deeply appreciated. I will link you to two YouTube videos, one from him and one from another YouTuber that ran off of the lies perpetrated by Austin Oganoski. Lastly, I will include a link that proves how he has been doing this to me since I came on to you. So what, what probably happened is he emailed my Jason Jacoby is a monster video and uh, Black Flags Matter, like, hey, you should, you should probably stay away from this guy or he needs to be locked up. And instead of actually looking at what was in the videos and like the crazy shit he was saying, they just took his word for it that it was, it constituted as bullying. So... A giant international video game corporation got manipulated by a literal schizo. As the entire sim racing community was like, this dude is massively fucking dangerous and like stalking people. YouTube in 2016. I, I include the link of Austin Oganoski and Darian Gilliam. And I said, I was a sim racer who never used foul language and always forgave on track incidents. I was controversial for my nice guy attitude and refusal to retaliate. Being attacked and called fake for being genuinely nice is a deeply hurtful accusation. And I included the link to the SimRace 24-7 website. And I said, thank you so much for your correspondence, Jason. And so... So keep in mind, the videos we made of him were of him, like, threatening his high school teacher. And he was saying, no, this is all just lies perpetrated by Austin Oganoski. And he's created this whole harassment campaign against me. Okay. And then they believed him that fired me. So, there's that. So, there's that whole folder. He's made four videos like that. We're not going to watch all of them because he just repeats himself over and over again saying that I destroyed his life, that I'm a horrible person, that I've created a cyberbullying campaign against him, which I didn't. I told people to call the police if, that, if he did anything creepy towards them. They better offer you back your job. Uh, no, that didn't happen. I did get an off-the-record apology, though. That's probably as much as I can say. But that doesn't put food on the table. So, then again, I can't show the actual details, but there's a screenshot of the email, basically, like my termination email. There's that. Uh, again, work documentation showing the current project lasted until 2025. I hate spoiling things. I won't show the actual, like, uh, like, the actual picture itself. But obviously, we had a ton of, like, internal, like, like every company does, just internal documentation showing, like, hey, here's our plans for the next project. And I have a I was smart before they disabled my access, like on my last day. Uh, I went and screenshot basically everything I thought would be relevant, and I was able to get a screenshot showing that P Cars 4 will probably last until 2025. And that's basically my argument that's going to be used for any sort of restitution, where I can say, hey, like, regardless of what the industry, what happens in the industry, what happens with like SMS as a company, whether they get kind of absorbed into Codemasters or remain their own separate entity, I expected to be working with them until 2025 because that's the, that's how long. Uh, the live service for, for PCARS 4 was going to last, and it would have been highly unlikely they would have gotten rid of me before that time. Has your hunt for a job gotten any better? Uh, I can't comment on that front. I have had one opportunity, but I don't know when things are going to officially start. So this is an important one. So we've spent the last, I don't know, 10 minutes going over Jason emailing these companies saying, I drove him to suicide. Uh, so this is proof it's defamatory. And this is why I have this folder in here. And this is what's going to fuck him. He has a suicide statement on his blog from 726 2021 something like six months after he emailed Slightly Mad Studios. And he blames someone completely different for his suicide. So this right here, after I've already lost my job, he basically changes who he blames his suicide attempt for based on who he's mad at that day. So this one's called Can You Run a Good Race? Again, upload 726 2021 middle of July or late July. Uh, when my inspiration and ability to do anything good in life was gone, I used a popular quote from the world's most popular book. Uh, I don't care for the Bible. Suicide was on my mind for over a decade before I attempted it. 
so this dude was threatening suicide when I was in high school. Okay? So just think about that. This went from Austin Ogonoski is the reason my life is ruined, and I'm going to call his employer and make sure they fire him for it, to actually, yeah, it had nothing to do with Austin Ogonoski. I was thinking about killing myself for over a decade when Austin Ogonoski was still in high school. I have wanted to strangle people for six months. So then, this gets better. He even uploaded a video where he says, actually, it's not even Austin Ogonoski's fault at all. It's Domino's Pizza's fault I tried to kill myself. So I have lost my job over claims that are, are genuinely false. <laughs> and, and and a lot of people probably probably owe me some, some, some answers at this point. <laughs> So anyways, here's his original suicide statement. I don't remember when this was uploaded. That's the problem. This, I think, was a little bit earlier before he called my work. But this will go to show, and we're going to watch this whole thing, because, this, again, this is important. This goes to show you that when he makes these defamatory claims saying, oh, Austin Ogonoski drives me to kill myself, it's actually not true. He just changes who was the motive for his suicide basically day to day. So none of it should be taken seriously. The emails, if he sends any crazy emails to either either me, my employers, or any of your employers, because he is chasing after people in the sim community. This is what happens. Hey everyone, so this is late October 2017, driving the Toyota RAV4 my aunt gave me for free, you know, running it into the ground on pizza deliveries where you're getting paid four dollars an hour it's true so he's depressed because he makes fuck all at domino's which is i don't blame him for that you know not a sweatshop but domino's doesn't pay well and they sure as hey don't put good chemicals in your body so this is kind of where his religious delusions first started uh, a lot of people don't know this but his whole religious delusions are not just like a schizo thing uh, according to Kenzie, I talked to her a while back about this, he ended up joining a cult uh, called the Restored Church of God. And you can look them up on w Wikipedia. And they they are the ones that have the doctrines like, hey, you shouldn't eat meat, uh, you should dress modestly, women shouldn't wear makeup. So he's essentially a, a schizo cult member at this point. Anyway, late October, and... I consider myself a failure. Stuff that will come out more one day. So he dances around talking about certain things at this point in time because he was instructed not to talk about Mackenzie. So anytime he says things I can't talk about, stuff that'll come out more one day, he's referring uh, to his ex-girlfriend. Just say the personal relationships I was in at the time had a lot pulling at me. Getting a lot of hate on YouTube, that's for sure. For people I meant well on, I never said anything bad about these people. I was so nice. And okay, and, and then this is another thing he doesn't he doesn't understand. So he's already mentioned the relationships that were pulling at me. So again, he's he, he's saying he's in a shitty relationship with his now ex girlfriend, and people are saying mean things to him on YouTube. But like, just because you're nice on YouTube, like it's not like a score. You know, it's not like you get points for for saying nice things or being polite or not swearing which gives you leeway to be crazy on YouTube. He thinks being nice is like a score. That's at least the way I've interpreted a lot of his ramblings, where, oh, but I said all these good things, it's okay if I say a few bad videos. He basically thinks being nice is like eye rating, where, like, as long as you have 500 nice videos, you can make 10 mean ones, because your average niceness level only will detract a little bit. Does that make sense? And they're coming against me. You know, if you care about people and they hate you, you know, it hurts. So, over these last few months, it's been time to desensitize and fight back. But we're going back to October 2017. This is a day unlike any other. So again, this is the suicide attempt that he spent, you know, weeks trying to convince my employer that was solely my fault. And I was the one who drove him to suicide. And if he succeeded, I should be charged with manslaughter and all kinds of shit. Right? That's where we are. The atmosphere, the clouds in the sky, the overcast shadow. Remember, 
when the rains came, right when the green flag was about to fly at the Daytona 500 this year, same thing. It was a day unlike any other. And I am being, you know, I'm considering myself a failure to God. Like, God, I think the best thing you want me to do. So he's just depressed. Do is take myself out because I can't do anything right in life. Well, that doesn't sound like Austin Ogonoski is at fault for your suicide attempt. That just sounds like you're depressed. So, I go on pizza delivery, and I always wore my seatbelt, buckled up all the time. Well, I debated wearing my seatbelt, so I didn't click it when I left the store. Eventually, uh, as I got down the road, I clicked it and got my seatbelt back on. And I was on the way. And you know, customers always were first. And I got to thinking about the pizza and how unhealthy this is that I'm serving them. And before I, I was on a double delivery, so... So he's not thinking about Osnogonoski here either. He's thinking about how unhealthy the pizza is. That's what's upsetting him that day. And he still remembers it all these years later. Doesn't sound like Osnogonoski drove you to kill yourself. Before I delivered the pizza, I got on this road called Whitehead Road in Athens, Georgia. And I saw these steel telephone poles. I saw one in the distance. And you know, as a NASCAR driver, fan, I was a good racer who never got the chance. Your aim's always on point. Uh, it ain't always on point. I know God had removed that from me for a while. I couldn't run lap times as fast as I was once able to. So as you can see... So is he really describing his suicide attempt as if he's like a NASCAR driver in a post-race interview? This is weird, man. See my frustrations, uh, my my thinking of myself as a failure is gone because I could do what I was just getting so good at at one point in my life. Not only that, I was a failure to everyone around me. So anyway, so again, my name has not come up at any point in this video. I'm a failure to everyone around me. The relationships I was in were bad. I was thinking about how unhealthy Domino's Pizza was. That certainly doesn't sound like Austin Ogonoski drove you to suicide. Wait. I see this telephone pole in the distance, it's steel, there's a row of them, and there's one that I... Uh, Brandon Brock, he actually did attempt suicide. That's confirmed by McKenzie, it, like, that was a real thing. And there were talks about it on Facebook, uh, when it happened, it kind of was like a rumor that spread around the grapevine, which is why he went missing for, like, a few, a few weeks to a few months. I know has no jumps, because there was a hill, and I'm like, well... This one's on a straight, you know, a level surface that I'm definitely going to hit it. So I took my seatbelt off on Whitehead Road. It's a 35 mile per hour road. And I looked down, closed my eyes, and I floored it. And the speedometer locks upon impact. So when they got it out of the vehicle, I was going just over 60 miles per hour. Thing is, though, I wasn't wearing a seatbelt and my head busted the windshield. No concussion. I got this scar under my chin. My nostrils got different shapes. So my nostrils got disfigured. They used to be symmetrical. Uh, I cracked a tooth right here. Uh, some say my smile is different ever since the accident. I broke. So again, we're four minutes into the video. And after this like massive campaign to get me fired, he has a completely different story of a suicide attempt. That doesn't involve me. It involves Domino's Pizza. Broke some ribs. Um, lost a knuckle kind of thing right here like I don't know if you can tell so that's kind of gone down and out there <laughs> so um, yeah uh, broke some bones but uh, didn't want to be here after that too because there are so many cruel people out there who after a suicide attempt because you know because your life just sucks so basically his excuse is that well he attempted suicide so you should not criticize him or do anything to hurt his feelings forever. So if he's being a creep to people on iRacing, well, that's his that's his immunity. Kind of like he's in a protected class now, at least that's his belief, is that, like, if he's a creep on iRacing, if he wrecks you in iRacing and you swear at him, like, you shouldn't do that ever at all. Because now he's a protected class. He attempted suicide, so he's a lot different than other people. S-U-C-K-S, it does not feel good when you get that much hate. Uh, especially if it's going, been going on since you first started school. So again, he winds us all into, 
Well, I've been bullied my entire life. It's not just through sim racing. It's been since the what would be, I guess, the early 2000s. You never fit in. It's like one hater said on my Instagram, uh, you're a social outcast, and he hopes I get what I deserve. So take it from a guy who never wanted to be here that uh, I tried to take myself out. Um, God is my witness. I'm still here for a reason. That's what other people have told me. If you look at the pictures of the RAV4, which I don't have access to, uh, the seat was pushed into the steering wheel. And we don't know who got me out, but I woke up as they were loading me into the ambulance. Oh yeah, my nose was also broken up here, so they had to... He also seems to like have fun vividly describing his injuries, because he did that in, in the previous video to SMS too. Like, he seemed to kind of, like, get off and, like, describing, oh, did you see how disfigured I was and I fucked up my nose? And, like, he has a very vivid, like, emphasis on, I gotta tell him all my injuries just to kind of show my victim status. But the problem is he's now changing who he blames his suicide for. Which, again, that would make that email or those set of emails and videos he made directed at my work defamatory. Straight up. Which opens him up to both criminal charges as well as a civil suit. Again, it's a mess. Folder six. This is my favorite. This is my favorite folder. My absolute favorite folder. So up to this point, it's been this guy's been after me for close to a decade. He's asked for my address. He's made physical threats threats against me. He's got another autist to make death threats towards me. He makes blog posts about me and shit that don't even make sense. Like every three days ranging from, like, I hope he never has a career again, to, like, directing Bible verses at me, to saying he loves me, to trying to get me fired from my job because he lied about me being the motive for a suicide attempt, to contradicting himself by blaming Domino's Pizza Pepperoni. Again, not Domino's Pizza itself, but just the pizza he was serving for driving him to suicide. And now we're at the account breaches. So... Subfolders in here, again, this is what you want to do. You want to make sure they're all nice and organized. Oh my god, that comment. Ryan, it's really nice to see you're in good spirits, Ryan, especially after your health scare. I'm, I'm very happy to see you out and about right now. So... This is the account breaches. So basically, after he got me fired, and after he spent a stint in jail in spring of 2021, he got out of jail. And he didn't return to social media yet, but there were six different account breaches just on my end. This, these also happen to other people as well. They happened to Mackenzie. They happened to a guy named Alex Wood. They happened to a guy named Justin Petschauer. Uh, within quick succession, he was trying to get into a bunch of our accounts. So obviously, I have these accounts listed here. Two of them he didn't really succeed, so my EA account doesn't use my, my typical email of xxxxaugieXXXX at gmail.com. So he tried to break into my EA account using that email, and he actually got in, but it's not my EA Origin account, so he just discovered there were no games. And was like, well that was a waste of time. And you can tell he, did, he was confused the first time because he did it again like a, a month or two later, thinking that like, well maybe... Austin had hit all his games. He like he almost did it to double check. Does that make sense? Is that OnlyFans? Yes. And you know what? Russell Despain, OnlyFans were the fucking MVPs of this whole thing. And you're about to see why. So yes, here's all the shit he got into. Uh, Instagram automatically locked him out. We'll save the best for last here. So this is just an email saying, hey, uh, we know suspicious activity. Again, I'm sorry these are taking a little longer to load, but I didn't want to use Firefox. So, Sunday, June 20th, near midnight, it would be 1 a.m. Jason's time. Again, I'm in Mountain Time, Jason's on Eastern Time. So he's sitting there at 1 a.m. on like a Sunday, Sunday night, Monday morning. Hi, Austin. Sorry to hear you're having trouble logging into Instagram. We can help you get straight back into your account. I wasn't. You know, I was, out, I was pretty, pretty sure I was out camping with my friends. Either camping or like around a fire somewhere. So, this is the email you get if someone tries to get into your account too many times. It automatically sends you a message being like, hey, you're an idiot and you can't, you guessed your password wrong too many times, so, like, what's up? 
So Instagram, that was like the same day he tried to get into Mackenzie's account, I believe. Uh, a core live again. I'm not going out of order on this one, but the order's on the page. I woke up July second, 2021. Hey, this hotel rewards program. There's been an account created in your name. First of all, I'm with Sandman, and I don't even think I have a Sandman account. I just have like a like one of those cards you get because for late model racing, I'd always stay there. So it's like, hey. You're creating your all a core live limitless account. Please enter the security code in the form to continue. So basically, someone set up an account in my name, and this is like a, a hotel rewards program thing. This code's valid for 24 hours. If you did not submit this request, please please ignore this email or contact us. So I did, and it didn't really go anywhere. They're just like, well, if if it wasn't you who made the account, just don't log in. But still, this is someone creating an account in my name. So this whole like, oh, Jason called Dave Moody and used your name. This isn't the first time he's actually done this. This was like him trying to... Uh, th this is him trying to set up some sort of like hotel rewards program. So again, like, he's done this before. This this whole like, oh, did you see what he... Did you see he called into Dave Moody using your name? Like, no, like, this is the thing. This He's done this. He's done this. Again, we'll go to EA. He didn't get into anything like interesting here because, again, I use a different email specifically for my EA Origin account because I was an idiot. And let me guess, it gets worse. Yeah, of course it does. So this is what it looks like when someone tries to sign into your EA. Hey, Augie, uh, we've reset your EA account password. We know this is an inconvenience. Okay, what happened? After detecting potentially suspicious activity associated with your EA account, we've reset the password to protect your personal information. Thanks, EA. You fired me, but you're at least nice enough to change my password. Awesome. But again, this is not the EA account I actually use. It is an account that just exists in my name because I think I set it up because I had forgotten the password to my actual EA account info. So I'm like, well, fuck it. I only have like a free-to-play game on there. Uh, and made this account, and then remembered the password to my original account. So basically, I have two EA accounts. He got into the one I don't use. And you can tell he was surprised. He's like, why the fuck doesn't Austin have any games on his EA account? Because he did it again in October. So not to be on his side, but where's the proof it's him? We're getting to that. That's why OnlyFans is the real MVP in this situation. So anyway... Same shit from EA, different day, October 19th, 2021. We reset your password to protect your account. We detected suspicious activity with your EA account. Cool, thanks, EA. So we've done this twice. Uh, again, out of order, June 30th, Amazon. So I get a text message, hey, there's been a sign-in attempt from the United States. Look, my shit doesn't get hacked. My password is, is pretty unique. You know, because, look, I'm young, I know how to set decent passwords. So anyway, here's your here's the various texts I've got to show it actually is like an Amazon account. So like here's your one time password, here's your one time password. And then five oh seven PM, so seven o'clock Eastern, Amazon, sign an attempt from US. Tap the link to respond. That means someone got in the account. And then once you tap the link, it takes you to this page. And again, this is all stuff you need to save because like the police and lawyers need to see this. Yeah, the big OnlyFans climax. I mean, that's why that's why I uh, saved it for last because they were good shit. So when you tap that link, it's like, hey, someone tried to sign into your sign into your account using this device at this time, uh, and then it shows that I denied it. So it it actually happened. I think I was at the bank doing something. So he tried to sign in five or six p.m. and then I was I checked my text messages and I'm like, oh, what the fuck's going on here, and denied it. Which, there's my IP, like, come at me, bro. I, I don't really care at this point. I've gotten docked so many times. So, anyway, what did OnlyFans do to be the real MVP? This is a great folder. Uh, so, new OnlyFans login, Atlanta. So, this is, this is the email you get when someone gets into your account. The site automatically detects when it's not your IP or it's a suspicious IP. So, this is, this is what makes me know it's him. 
hey, Pizza Sub, yep, that's my name. It's just, it's my fucking Steam name. Like, at the end of the day, I, I have no creativity. We noticed a login to your account from, from a new device. Was this you? Location, United States, Atlanta, Georgia. Gee, I wonder who in the United States doesn't like me, lives near or in Atlanta, Georgia, and has a porn addiction. There's precisely one person that this is. So, I go into my email, and there's more fucking emails. Confirmation of new subscriptions. This is where it's funny. Tons of black girl porn. And, like, I don't want to spoil it, but it's just, like, new subscription, new subscription, new subscription, all within, like, five minutes of each other. <laughs> so, it's like, congratulations, you have successfully subscribed to a black girl. Uh, Saturday, June 12th, 9.44 p.m., so this would be around midnight his time on a Saturday night. And then six minutes later, he's like, no, that's not enough. So he subs, subs to another girl. No, that's not enough. So nine minutes later, no, i got to sub to this girl. So in the span of 15 minutes, this is probably, this is the night of the first SRX race, because I remember I tested my mini stock that day. So like me and my buddy are watching the SRX race. And then afterwards, I check my phone. And I'm like, what the fuck? And then again, like five to 10 minute increments, like, hey, another girl he subbed to, another girl he subbed to. Yeah, this is, this is great. Content request number one, and he, he went deeper too. It wasn't just like subbing to a few girls and like having a wank to what was on their wall. You could do a whole presentation on this. What do you think I'm doing? <laughs> it's Wednesday night. It's early January. It's minus 40 outside. We're having fun with this. So, Sasha from, I don't know what flag that is, paid a view. Hi, can I buy this please? No. So he's like starts messaging the girls. This is gold. I, like, I hope one day I can laugh at this and, like, in, in doing this stream, like, <laughs> I can laugh at this, or in doing this stream, I can laugh at it too. Here's another one. You're professional Alma. Again, you can probably look these girls up. I don't think they've changed their usernames. Hey, can I buy your squirting compilation? <laughs> he didn't like the Polish whore I was subbed to? Come on, man. What's wrong with Pauline? So, like, he's messaging these girls. And then I'm like, hey, OnlyFans, can you give me his IP? And I think it's this email where I asked for it. Let me check. So the moral of the story is to have an OnlyFa OnlyFans account. Dude, OnlyFans uh, uh, porn accounts do not fuck around. So I'm like, hey, can you can you help me, please? Thanks for reaching out. We don't have phone support this time. We'll be more than glad to assist you via email. We forward your case to the dedicated department for investigation. Any unsolicited charges will be refunded within five business days. Please avoid filing any charge back. As soon as the investigation is completed, you'll receive an email update with a temporary link to your OnlyFans account. You'll be asked to change your email address and enable a two-step verification feature. Basically, these guys are legit. I have no problems with how this website acted. These guys were fucking on the ball. They got back to me within two days. They fucking emailed me Monday. These dudes were legit. I have nothing but praise for them. Uh, so anyway, I sent something back. I'm like, hey, can I get the guy's IP? And and guess what? Guess what? They did give me his IP. Miranda from OnlyFans, the MVP, at least for this folder. Hello, thank you for your reply. The investigation on your case has been completed, and we can confirm that all unsolicited charges have been successfully refunded. It may take 35 business days. Please sign, yeah, fuck you. The IP address of all fraudulent purchases is 66115175 The device that was used is desktop Apple, Mac 1015, Chrome 91.0. Thank you. So you look up that IP, it's uh, based in the state of Georgia, it's from a company called Performive Server Solutions, and I've contacted them too, but they were kind of wishy-washy, they didn't really get back to me. Uh, it seems like a small like a VPN service provider, or at least some sort of server provider, so I don't know where he purchased the porn, whether it was like at like a public library or like you know, at, like, his mom's house or something, or, like, at his mom's work, and he was just on the computer in his spare time or something, or, like, I don't know, like, a hotel computer. I don't fucking know, 
but I got his info. So, moral of the story, buy porn because if someone hacks your accounts, OnlyFans will f be fucking based and give you their IP and walk you through everything, and they'll do it within like a few days. I love how OnlyFans is a more reliable customer service than Google and YouTube. Lamau. Yep. So, of course, end of the day, what happens? Do they refund my charges? Of course. Your charge has been refunded. Your charge has been refunded. Your charge has been refunded. Based. And they did it, like, bang on, like, 4.57 a.m. So, like, some dude, if it's East Coast time, is, like, sitting there, like, before 7 a.m. Being like, yep, we gotta give Austin his money back. So, like, these dudes were based, but still, got his IP, uh, have a record of when all this shit happened. So that's everything under the account breaches. So, again... It started with OnlyFans, and it turned into, well, I got into his OnlyFans. Let's see if that same password works for all these other websites, which apparently it did. Let's get into his EA shit. Let's try and buy shit, you know, using his card on Amazon. Damn. Do you get to keep the subzone? No, of course not. I like my Polish whores. I didn't like who he's up to. Anyway, that's one folder. So all that shit saved. That's the kind of shit you need to document when it comes to, like, account breaches. You need to, you need to document emails and say, hey, we know suspicious activity. Uh, if you converse with support, uh, you need to save that. And you need to ask questions. You need to ask, like, hey, uh, can I get the person's IP? And they straight up gave it to me. Uh, I, I had the same call with Amazon. I talked to customer support. They unfortunately couldn't give it to me. But the dude was really nice and really helpful. And he's like, here's how to download your profile and, like, check to see how much he got into, which thankfully he didn't buy anything. But, yes. I've checked it. Unfortunately, it isn't concrete evidence that Jacoby did commit wire fraud, but, like, we all kind of know it's him. Like, a dude with a porn addiction in the U.S. who loves black girls, who is pissed enough at me to hack my obscure OnlyFans account that, like, no one knew about until that day. Like, it's, it's him, you know? So, folder 7. Parents seemingly tasked with keeping away him away from technology. This is an important folder because, again, I mentioned earlier... I believe this guy is under some sort of guardianship or conservatorship, which means the onus for a lot of his behavior, in my opinion, uh, falls on his parents. It is their role to kind of babysit him. They're aware he harasses and stalks people. And in him chasing after people like myself, like Darian, and sending all the crazy emails he does. Do you use two-stage authentication? <laughs> yeah, I do now. So anyways, as I was saying, again, I think he's under some sort of conservatorship, which would make his parents primarily responsible for any of the malicious behavior he's done. And in some ways, that has been verified by Jason's own posting. So this post from uh, January, fir or January 15th, 2021... He, I think he makes a blog post about a bird. Yeah. I had this post written a few months ago, but my dad had me delete it. Which means his parents were monitoring what he was posting on his blog, and either giving the thumbs up or thumbs down to it. So anytime he's making crazy posts about, like, Joni Axner, about, like, me, his parents are fully aware that he's, like, harassing these people. They're seeing it. Apparently, all of his blog posts were going through his parents, and maybe even his YouTube videos, too. Well, again, JC1424, like, they have all of this. So either, they, either like, someone's been bored enough to just, or not bored enough to go through everything, or they're still caught up in which jurisdiction this falls under, I don't know. But, like, goddamn. So anyway, back to the folder at hand. This kind of implies that his parents were screening everything. So they have a schizophrenic son in their basement who's making, you know, crazy rants on YouTube... Uh, and, and making crazy blog posts that no one can understand, and he's, like, stalking people and smearing people. And apparently it's actually all going through them. They're all seeing it, they're all monitoring it, and being like, no, that one was too crazy, you need to delete it. So, as far as I'm concerned, does that mean they condone anytime he makes these crazy videos smear smearing me, or smearing Darian, or smearing Joni Axon? That would put them, that would make them culpable. Who is Joni Axel, for those who don't know? It's a, it's an old high school teacher of his. 
so again, I'm starting to believe that, like, hey, it, this is kind of on the parents at this point. They seem to know that he's doing all this, and they're stepping in every once in a while. Another one, this came on uh, December 1st, 2021, so it was pretty recent. Uh, this one's entitled, Parents Taking Electronics from Him. Again, I'm sorry for the load times. It is what it is. Solomon was skilled in the practice of the dark arts, and Jesus was referred to as the white wizard. Okay. Let's skip the first, uh... Nope, hold on, let's not skip the first one. When prophesizing on Facebook and YouTube last year, so when he, whenever he posts on YouTube or Facebook just crazy shit, he believes he's like a religious prophet. Does that make sense to you? I begged my parents not to take my phone away. I told them my friends would die if they took me away. Okay. But as has been the case since my youth, my crazy mother said, you're schizophrenic. So, again, the parents are fully aware he's doing this. They're fully aware he's calling people's employers to try and get them fired. And every once in a while, they do step in. But they deem crazy messages to Osnogonoski's employer not worth stepping in for. They deem crazy YouTube videos about his ex-girlfriend not worth stepping in for. They deem crazy messages about Joni Axon and his high school teachers not worth stepping in for. So do they condone this? But occasionally they do step in, and we're not sure what what uh, entails this reaction. But regardless, yada yada yada. I was at a vineyard. I met a girl, but she killed herself. And then he looked her up on YouTube because he remembered her one day. I don't know what tangent he's on. My parents had taken every access to people away from me, and the YouTube app on my television was the only way back to the internet. Even the YouTube video of her obituary was removed, but web links still remain. Pay close attention to her birthday, the 13th. So, again, his parents are aware that he's doing this stuff. But they're not stepping in being like, oh my god, we're so sorry our son contacted your employer. You know, please don't take action against this guy. They don't reach out to people like Mackenzie and being like, yo, we're so sorry, like, this is so fucked up, we're on your side of this. Uh, when he goes after people like Rhett McBride and the other entities you'll see later on in this video... Again, they don't step out and be like, yo, we're, we're so sorry. Like, what can we do to help you? Like, we're sorry our son's fucked up. So they all know this is happening. They only step in in select circumstances as opposed to like, yo, we, we have to get our kid off the internet. It's really bad. And then parents are hiding computers from him. So again, they know. But as he reveals in this video, and this is something I've included in more like standard YouTube uploads, they would then fuck off. <sighs> I don't have my smartphone. My parents went out of town. They went to Helen, Georgia. And I found one of the computers they hid from me. They're keeping me from my people, man. Come on. They are keeping me from you. I have so many great ideas I want to share. So... His parents know he's schizophrenic and harassing people online, and that he's actually getting into a lot of trouble doing this. But all they really do is just, like, lock computers up in, like, some easily accessible pantry, and then fuck off and, like, go out of town for, like, weeks at a time. That's really not how you're supposed to handle a kid who has, like, schizophrenia or, like, a serious mental illness where he's actively, like, committing crimes against people. Didn't his dad pass away from COVID? Yes, that video was, I believe, in, made in the fall of 2020. This parents hide computers from him. So again, they know he's doing this. They know that he's engaging in a lot of shitty behavior, but like they do the bare minimum to stop it. They're like, we're going to lock up your computers, but like we're going to fuck off. And like if you find them, like who cares? Which is not the attitude they should be having. Do your parents know this is happening to you? Yes, and they do not support me at all. So yeah, like, they're doing the bare minimum. If there is some sort of conservatorship or guardianship in place, uh, they'd be in a lot of fucking shit. Because, hey, like, if you if you sign some sort of court order saying, hey, you're going to look after your schizophrenic kid so he doesn't get in trouble, and in reality you're just like, yeah, we'll, we'll lock up his computer sometimes, but, like, I don't know, we're just going to fuck off for, like, weeks at a time, and whatever, whatever trouble he gets into during that time, we're just going to shrug our shoulders at and be like, I don't know, I guess he got into the locked. Like, okay. 
so again, this this kind of fuels my thought process of why his parents should probably be held responsible for this. I do not think he's he's a free adult. I believe there's some sort of guardianship thing at play. Because they're always like, why else would they be locking up stuff? If there was no guardianship or conservatorship order, like, they don't give a fuck. Like, that's really not their problem. But if they're, like, grounding him like he's a teenager, yet he's 29, 30, 31 years old, that makes it sound like they're obligated to be like, no, we gotta keep him out of trouble. But, like, they're doing the bare minimum, and they just don't give a shit at the end of the day. Folder 7A, Jason's parents ignore others who warn them about their son's behavior. And this is this is where it gets really fucked up, and you can tell they're doing the bare minimum. So this is sent on 0305-2021 by a guy named Justin Petschauer. He's a guy that runs a lot of IndyCar and iRacing. He basically found Jason's mom on Facebook, because she's on Facebook, and was like, yo... Your uh, your son is like saying crazy shit on YouTube, and like you probably need to do something about it. He didn't send her like a long message; just literally, please get your son off social media. He's back uploading videos targeting members of the iRacing and NASCAR community, and he just sends like her a screenshot. It's not some long drawn out piece. It's just like, hey, your son's being kind of crazy, and you should like do something about this. I don't think this is a very bad message to send, and I think every normal person who watches this video is gonna be like, yeah, he didn't do anything wrong. This person is unavailable on Messenger, so he instantly got blocked. She didn't even respond to him. That's how little they care. If his parents have guardianship over him, why or how is he living with that Davina girl? Well, there could be several levels of guardianship. Like, my buddy dated a girl who didn't have access to her own finances. Her mom did. Because she was a recovering... She was a recovering something addict. So she, she was in a lot of trouble at one point, And she had just gotten her life back together. And she actually wasn't bad for the majority of time they dated. So, like, she didn't have access to her own funds or couldn't spend more than, like, X amount per day, and it was, like, a really low amount. But, yes, yeah, so, like, people other than me were trying to reach out to his mom and be like, you need to get your kid, like, off YouTube so he stops harassing people and, like, get him away from the internet, and she just couldn't be bothered with it. This is a fun folder. I debated including this or not, but, like... It's very obviously Jason. So Jason's not allowed to be on YouTube at this point. Uh, this is middle of summer. He had signed some paperwork, especially his bond condition state that like he's not supposed to be on YouTube at all. And this is when he was still trying to adhere to it. And so the way he got around that was to make a fake YouTube account. And this is obviously him. So I just took screenshots of these comments. And they get more deranged as they go on, which I really, really like. Because it was like, it started... As, like, who the fuck is this guy? Is this, like, a guy from, like, my 4chan days? And then it's like, no, it's Jason. So I'm going to go through all these because they're funny. Imagine digging this deep and losing your job over him. Dude, you lost the plot. You live in your parents' basement and just like him. You should go to therapy and learn how to be a man. So he's mad that I read his blog. I did a stream where I read, like, his craziest blog posts. And he was basically mad that I read them and showed how crazy they were. Austin represents also why you should not trust the community. Truly vile person full of shit that lives in his mom's basement. Yeah, this is Jason. Austin is a loser that lives in his mom's basement. There's nothing to better to do. I would argue you're just as mentally ill as him. You lost your job and aren't focusing on yourself, but you'd like to obsess over this. You are entering dangerous legal grounds. His whole focus on yourself, that's the line where I'm like, this is Jason. So he just continued doing this. And again, he posted under Leroy Jenkins, which is an old World of Warcraft meme. I remember seeing that Leroy Jenkins account. Yes. <laughs> was that the Kroger Mom blog? Yeah, that was the stream I read all the Kroger Mom shit. Uh, so I did... I did, like, an AC stream. Or, like, an AC condensed race video where I ran in a Daytona Prototype Championship. So this had nothing to do with Jason. It was literally just me streaming a race. And all he commented was, In Mommy's Basement on SMS Shitty Alien where they gave you... Where's the P-Cars 2 stock car you had? He called, he spells P-Cars 2 with the wrong capitalization. Get help, dude, and stop shitting on the people that helped you. It, this is literally a, just an AC stream where I'm like, hey, I'm racing a Daytona prototype. I think it was a Road, Road America race in particular he commented on. So he thinks I'm shitting on the people that helped me. And it was literally just a league race stream where I was like, hey, this was a lot of fun and I had fun today. Like, again, EP says, says it precisely. Too obvious with how mad he gets. I think you might need to get help in the same as Jacoby has. You lost your job. You live in your parents' basement like Jacoby. You have zero post-secondary. And he just goes on and on like this. Just over and over again, mad and trying to say that, like, I should just work on myself. It's, it's bizarre. 
And again, this whole comment, stop shitting on the people that helped you, that was very bizarre, because, like, it, again, it was just a race stream. <laughs> like, it, I didn't even know what he was referring to, but I let him continue. Austin, would you say that Insane Jason has actually caused you any issues with your personal life? Yeah, I lost my job, and I haven't ha I've been out of work for eight months. There is an, an opportunity lined up, but I don't want to say things until I've actually signed the contract. So here's another one. Uh, Dr. Kelp comments like, oh, how do you know this is Jason? I was like, oh, someone shows up with a burner account made in 2011, desperately trying to smear me as an insane and pushing me to drop the issue with pseudo-intellectual talk like, why don't you work on yourself, man? Gee, who wonder, wonder who that could be? So Jason, who is totally not, you know, under or totally under a burner account, gee, wonder who it could be. Keep running shit boxes. That that should be one word. Someone else sets up for you. You have zero respect to your peers in province. Again, this last line is schizo bullshit. You have zero respect to your peers in province. What does that even mean? Like, <laughs> what, what do you mean I have no respect for my province? And that kind of, that kind of goes into his, like, NASCAR deranged rant territories where he's like, drivers have no respect for their fans and they don't sign enough autographs and they, they promote unhealthy foods that's kind of that same tangent that he goes on, except he used it for me and said I was disrespecting the province of Alberta, which makes no sense because, you know, it's a schizo rant, so that's when I knew it was him. And then finally, I don't remember what four is. How's that number two Project Cars Chevy doing nowadays? Oh, that's right, nobody likes you. You sold it, but you won't tell anyone. Yeah, I, I told everyone like the moment I sold it. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go mini-stock racing with my, with my dirt friends. Hopefully you'll learn to treat your peers with respect. You should probably stop playing Hot Wheels and get a real job. What an embarrassment. Also, getting so many likes on my comments that you banned to hide your shit. You aren't even a good sim racer. Tons of people are beating you day after day. Let it go and get a fucking job. So I pin-shamed him. Yeah, like, I, I sold the car because there was literally no racing. It was the middle of COVID. Like, the season was basically cancelled. So now I have this, like, 15 grand late model that I can't run any races at. Meanwhile, our tracks in Alberta actually opened up in 2020, so I'm like, why not run a mini stock for, like, 2,500 bucks? And I can race every weekend with my friends at a track that's, like, 30 minutes from my house. So I made a bunch of money selling off my late model. I sold it to a guy, I believe his name was Brandon French. Uh, he ran it in the Canada 200 this year, I think, and ended up wrecking it. Uh, but it's had it's got all new shit put into it. It's, he, he did a really nice job on it. But, like, there was nowhere to race. It was the middle of fucking COVID. So I'm like, yeah, I'll fucking sell it. Like, I have this car I can't race. Like, okay. So he is... He is very upset that I sold this car. Like, ba basically, he sees it as, like, an admission of defeat that, like, my racing career is over. And then I proceeded to buy a mini stock and win the provincial championship. So, like, okay. But again, definitely him. Hopefully you'll tr learn to treat your peers with respect again. Like, this is how I knew it was him too. Like, I don't work on my own shit. Other guys do because they know, like, I'm, I'm a pretty good driver. And that I'm probably going to win a race. So, like, they want to work on my shit. You should stop playing Hot Wheels and get a real job. Like, I was literally just playing Hot Wheels Unleashed. That's what I think he commented this on. I was playing, like, this is when, like, uh, the Milestone Hot Wheels game came out. Getting so many likes on my comments that you, that you banned to hide your shit. You aren't even a good sim racer. We all know that's not true. Some, tons of people are beating you day after day. Yeah, that's why I'm number one in Canada and in North America on AC. Like, just, like, stuff that doesn't even make sense. Dude, Brandon French, that guy lives in my city. He crashed it at Western Speedway. Yeah, that white 74 car, that's my old car. He, he gave it all new panels, but it's the same alien chassis underneath. I don't know if he painted the chassis or not. Worst case, you could buy another one later should you want to race again. Well, he, yeah, Luke. There's not a big scene in Alberta because there's only one paved track, and it's a quarter-mile bullring with a lot of contact. Like, yeah, and again, it was my race car. Like, I had every right to sell it. Like, that's what people do at the amateur level. They just, like, sell and buy shit every year. <laughs> like, it's just... It was weird. He, uh... It, it's weird. It's very weird. But, yeah... Uh, Catholic Cavanaugh, uh, the white 74 car is, is my, my old car. That's kind of neat. <laughs> Fucking small-ass world here. Uh, so this is a fun folder. Admitting to sending harassing emails towards others is encouraging people to do the same. So, 
this is an important folder because up to this point, you know, you could still make the argument that, like, well, maybe it's just ongoing beef between you. And, like, maybe he's just, like, doing shit in retaliation to you. And that maybe you've egged him on, so he's responded in, in ways where he felt it was necessary to escalate things. And maybe he called your employer because you made crazy YouTube videos about him. Or something like that, right? Folder 9 shows that, no, this is a behavior pattern. And he just chases after, like, anyone at random. And we will... Sorry. We will go through all of these. Starting in 5-15-2020. So this is a collection of times on his blog where he's admitted to sending crazy emails to people. And I do have something to reveal later as we go through this folder. We'll get there, though. I would love for you to come down to Idaho and see you race. That was the plan at one point when things were actually open. Uh, there was an idea that we'd probably go super late racing eventually, just put the, put the parts in that were necessary and run, I think it's the Idaho, Idaho 200. We had a lot of, like, weird contingency plans, and then, like, COVID just fucked everything, right? Because it's like, well, we can't race anywhere, we're not making money, we can't fly anywhere, like, it was just, it was a mess. So, again, this, this whole folder is just times on his blog he's admitted to harassing other people. So it starts in 5-15-2020, very early in his breakdown. Uh, Bubba and I share a similar connection to Domino's. I won't read the whole thing. Uh, Domino's, Domino's. When I sent the email to Domino's, the timing, tone, and spirit of the email were off. I knew it would be rejected. So he was writing schizo shit to Domino's, begging for a sponsor to, 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 to go racing or something. Which, again, like, dude, you're like a sim racer, like, playing iRacing. And he wasn't even in any esports shit. So he's, first of all, he's harassing Domino's. On a Saturday morning at 12, 11 a.m., I received an email saying that they admired and respected my endeavors, but didn't have the budget to support a ride. Okay, so it actually sounds like he asked for, like, a proper NASCAR Cup Series ride. So, yeah... So he's, so he's writing schizo emails to, like, major companies. Like, this is just something he does all the time. Uh, we skip ahead to 8-17-2021. Yeah, uh, Vern Beam, uh, one of the guys, not that I've raced with personally, but guys that race at the same tracks I do, and I talk to his dad, uh, the Eamon family, Tyler and Trevor Eamon, they usually go to Idaho and go race. It's usually, like, a white and blue 17 car. So, one of Dale's drivers, this is a blog post from 8-17-2021, please email Junior Motorsports at shoptours at jrmracing.com and refer them to this website. So he wants people to harass Dale and her junior. And then he goes on and on about why he should be hired for an NASCAR ride. Uh, skipping ahead, 10-19-2021, Ryan Moody, I'd pay to see those letters of him begging for NASCAR sponsorship. Uh, back in the day, that's kind of why, like, I started, like, covering him on PRC. Because he used to actually make, like, full-blown YouTube videos being like, hey, you should, like, don donate to my crowdfunding campaign so I can get a Legends car. I'm going to be, your, I'm gonna be a, a major NASCAR driver one day. Like, it was, it was weird. So, again, 10-19-2021, Dale Jr. exposed. I have emailed many teams that have given no response trying to show the good deeds I would do if given the opportunity. So he's, har he's harassing a bunch of NASCAR teams. Being like, hey, you should give me a ride. And either doesn't get anything back, or they tell him not to contact him anymore. Uh, what one is this? This is the Joni Axon post. Uh, 11 2021 He had to pull these down because Joni Axon did take out a protection order on him. Very, very important to mention. Uh, she has she has taken action against him, so he had to pull these down, but I saved it before it was pulled down. Uh, it's called When Will You Learn to Fall? It was posted November 26th. Uh, just bitching about how much he hated school, which he does all the time. Uh, I'm jailed every day for the evil treatment I've received, if you can't tell. God has made me very literate. When I kindly reached out to Joni Axon to speak with her about how much he hurt me, she said this, get help. No capital G and no period at the end. All this from America's teacher. So he's mad that she half-assed a response, and that apparently means she has terrible grammar. Truth be told, I reached out twice via email to kindly resolve the damage she did, and she reported me to the assistant principal who told me not to message her anymore. 
the third time, okay, so even after he's told, hey, fuck off, you're, you're harassing us, he just keeps going, doesn't give a shit. I called her what she is, an idiot, and the worst teacher in the world. Starting to read like a John Boy script at this point. Need like a, a photo of John Heisman in the corner, just like looking stern at the camera. And you know what? That's the only email she probably saved of mine. So, he's harassing his teacher. So, like, all, all these different companies, he's just sending crazy shit to. Another one, Rhett McBride. And this is this is the one where I get to reveal that, yes, I have received an apology from at least one entity that, uh, off the record. I won't say anything that was said, but I had posted this on my Facebook page back in November this particular screenshot, and I was like, hey, uh, Jason is coming after me again, and all I'm going to say is at least one entity responsible for me losing my job reached out, and I was like, dude, I'm so sorry, we fucked up. Like, you're right, this guy has agend an agenda, everything you said was correct, we can't do anything about it now, but like, basically we believe you and you got fucked. So anyway, Rhett McBride is just some guy who worked at uh, Augusta National Golf Course, that race with Jason on iRacing in either a league or just, you know, A-fixed. I, I have no idea who the fuck this guy is. Uh, doesn't have a YouTube presence, doesn't have a Twitter presence. I found him on Facebook, but, like, he has nothing about sim racing. I know it's him because there, he's been, like, tagged in posts from, like, five years ago on, like, some iRacing team page. Uh, goes on about golf. Does Rep McBride still work at Augusta National Golf Club? He sure made a lot of fun of me for trying to lay down my life, so I wonder if they'll club him with the truth and remove him from office. Is he a president? Okay. You've driven into the lowest hole when you're slandered, especially in a video game where children are trying to have fun. You can email Augusta to let them know about the cyberbullying I went through, and don't forget to drop Rhett McBride's name. So the same thing he did to me with SMS and EA and Codemasters, he is trying to do with this guy who works at Augusta National Golf Course, the exact same playbook. And again, I posted this on Facebook, someone reached out to me, and they're like, oh my god, dude, I did not realize it was this bad. You were right about everything you told us. We are so sorry. But we can't do anything, but we're so sorry. And you were right, and just holy fuck, this is... You weren't kidding about how bad this was. So... This just shows you the extent that this guy is going to. And again, this is what I hope law enforcement takes a look at. And I hope, you know, once, once civil stuff gets started that, like, this factors into everything, it's not just him chasing after me. He chases after people with no social media presence, who haven't made videos on him, who he just ran into a league race one day and didn't like, and says, hey, you should call their job and try and get them fired. And then he does it himself. Again, Catholic Kavanaugh, like, the H when the HR machine gets, gets, gets rolling, <laughs> you're fucked. There's a reason Michael Scott hates Toby on The Office, and it's because of that shit. Like, I don't get how they would take him seriously. Well, again, that's HR for you. HR's job is to protect the company. They were mad. That they believed that if they got rid of me, he would stop mentioning SMS or Ian Bell on his YouTube channel, which very obviously didn't happen. So now it's just this giant fuck of, oh god, we fired a guy who didn't do anything wrong. Why would any job listen again? Because it's just, that's just how HR works. How long has he been going after you? I've mentioned earlier in this in this stream, eight years. Eight or nine years. So again, that's Rhett McBride. He tried to get Rhett, Mc, Rhett McBride fired same in the same vein I did. Or he tried to get me fired. So he's been doing this to just a ton of people. And it, and it doesn't end. Uh, next picture, Max Pappas. So Max Pappas, a retired cart driver a retired NASCAR Cup Series driver, I think he's a part-timer, or he ran Xfinity, one of the two. I once reached out to Max Pappas and Bobby O'Malley, I don't know who that is, about a special wheel, probably the MPI steering wheels. It was made of the kind of fabric only rich people could have offered to pay the same price, but Kyle Busch was the only one worthy to hold such a disgraceful product. And then goes on to slander the company. So he's like writing schizo emails to, to MPI being like, Hey, my name is Jason. I've been involved in the sport for 20 years. I'm a real NASCAR driver. Can you give me an a MPI steering wheel for my sim rig? And they're like, no. <laughs> like, who the fuck are you? So he slanders them. This was another post that was really concerning and people called the police about. Uh, he's not... Uh... 
Uh, he's not just after Joni Axon. This is a post that was deleted that I ended up saving because, it, again, it fits in this folder. This one's called for Braden and Becky. Uh, there, was a, there was a school shooting, I think, in, in California or something uh, late November this year. So once that did the, did the rounds on the news, he condoned it. And uh, goes on about how all these teachers know he was abused in school, apparently. And then says, I need justice, my friends. If you do this for me, you do this for God. What, what does this mean? Children in school are suffering all around the world, and the best learning is not found in schools of evil and oppression. This school put me through absolute hell during my time there and long after, and then has a link to all the contact info for the staff at Madison County High School in Georgia. This is like a day after a school shooting. What do you think he's implying here? And again, this, after uh, Joni took action against him, this post was deleted, but I made sure I fucking saved this, because he's essentially calling for a school shooting. Basically saying that, like, hey, can someone shoot up this place on behalf of me? It, that, was, that, was, that was not a nice night. Anyway, a week later, so he's after the Al Alpine Stars uh, uniform and shoe brand. Uh, this one's called Suarez's Stinky Suit. I like the, I like the blog title on this one. 12-8-2021. So this is about a month ago. Daniel, you've got to deal with K1, but you're wearing a competitor's clothing. Alpine Stars treated me like absolute junk when I called them, so I threw their kangaroo leather boots in the trash. So basically, he had a custom Alpine Stars driver suit made, uh, but I guess he called them to beg for, like, an endorsement deal or something. I'm just, I'm just kind of paraphrasing and, like, trying to piece together things based on what's in here. And just what we know Jacoby is prone to doing. So he called Alpine Stars and was like, can I have an endorsement deal? I'm a real NASCAR driver. And they're like, oh, no, who the fuck are you? So then he slanders them. And then last one, favorite one, Deborah Gonzalez, a member of the district attorney in Athens, Clark County. I'm losing words for this dude. Yeah. Just imagine how I feel. 12-19-2021, uh, a couple, couple days before Christmas. Friends, please help me send this to Miss Deborah Gonzalez in the office of the athens Clark County District Attorney, Deborah Gonzalez at accgov.com, and then the District Attorney's email, and he makes a video for them, uh, basically saying how much he hates Deborah Gonzalez. So yeah, there's this whole pattern of harassment. I know some people who are kind of on the fence about this whole situation are like, well, you egged Jacoby on. You made videos calling him a monster. You're a horrible person, and, and there's a reason he's stalking you. Yeah, what did Domino's Pizza do to him? What did Dale Jr. do to him? What did fucking Rhett McBride do? What about Joni Axon? How about Max Pappas? What about, you know, making a blog post where he's like, hey, if you do this for me, you do this for God, and then post a link to all the contact info from his high school teachers? What about Alpine Stars? You think Alpine Stars made YouTube videos saying stay away from Jason Jacoby? No, of course not. And yet all these people got harassed instead. Deborah Gonzalez, I mean, that's just that's just one of the ladies in charge of putting him away, right? So, I kind of understand that, but still, like... I understand that I made YouTube videos where I'm like, hey, you should stay away from this dude, but even if you don't, he still chases after you and sends your employer crazy emails. Puma made me pay for my shoes in 2012. I should contact them and, and uh, they owe me a refund. Who is texting me? <laughs> my old crew chief is like, I'm so happy happy to hear you found love with Derry and Gilliam. <laughs> Does anyone know where he gets the whole Dale Jr. shares his wife thing? Uh, I have an opinion on that. It's a weird one. So, the last folder, the folder that the police see or are directed to, the folder the lawyers are directed to, just right off the bat, defamatory claims. Uh, and these are just very small clips from his streams, where it's very point blank, like, this is the defamatory statement he made. So this is, I'd, I would download the video, I'd go into Sony Vegas, and I would cut out, like, the one sentence he said. So it's easy for, for law enforcement or lawyers to be like, okay, this is what he's saying, that's crazy. Uh, so let's go with, uh, this one. Austin got me arrested on false charges.
you know, he actually got me sent to jail by editing one of my explanation videos in which I had to defend myself against his lies and accusations. He took the whole clip, edited it into 20 seconds, sent it to the police, and that's what I got arrested off of. That's not true. There was a massive uh, investigation into his behavior against McKenzie. Uh, the cops did ask for some backups I had as, uh, of, of videos of his, but I just sent them the full thing. But this whole Austin Ogunoski got him arrested on false charges, that's not true. Lying to police is a felony, so he's, like, he's essentially accusing me of a felony, which in itself is a felony. <laughs> so that's, that's defamatory. Uh, this is a good one. Austin Ogunoski is gay. Multiple women can attest uh, that this is not the case. Looks like Joni Axon was granted the stocking emergency protective order on December 15th. Where did you figure that one out? Darian Gilliam is gay, alongside Austin Ogunoski, couple lover boys, couple two daddies, two daddies. I'm I'm not gay. Sorry, guys. Austin Ogunoski is schizophrenic and hears voices. I am uh, I'm not schizophrenic either, bud. We're gonna go through the majority of these because it's just it's wild. Or maybe. Maybe you got some other stuff in your head. Maybe you've got some autism too. Maybe you've got some schizophrenia. Maybe you've got some voices telling you to make hateful articles about innocent people. Huh. Ooh. I wonder. I wonder. Not schizophrenic. Sorry, bud. Uh, Osnogonoski stole from me. And he stole my ideas. And because he stole from me, he rightfully lost his job. And he will continue to serve vegan meals to homeless people if that's what he's really doing. Because um, that's the only thing he should do. He should get offline and serve. So I lost my job because I stole his ideas and stole from him. Okay. I definitely didn't steal from him. Uh, your cruelty towards children. That's another one. So whether that means abusing kids or like touching kids. I don't know. It can be both. As far as I'm concerned, it can be both simultaneously. But like again, those are big accusations. When you when you Austin throw shit around like that, you fucker. Your cruelty toward children, man. Like you can't you can't be saying that stuff about people, man. Like, it's one thing to go on YouTube and call people morons or idiots, but, like, when you make very specific accusations, like, hey, you're, you're being cruel to kids, you're, you're schizophrenic and hearing voices, you got me arrested on false charges, you stole from me, when you accuse people of, like, committing, like, serious crimes, that in itself is a felony. Uh, dear SMS, Austin brought false charges against me. In the middle of last year, he brought on false charges by my ex who profusely lied about me. Nope. Didn't bring on false charges. There was already a police investigation open. They had been compiling evidence for months. That's not true. Uh, please email Austin Ogunoski's employer and get him fired. Here's another one. And again, I would start asking questions now because we are coming to the end of this kind of folder tour. So we got about 10 minutes left from the stream. So if you want to help me, please email his uh, boss, Ian Bell, or the company Slightly Mad Studios at the contact in the link below and um, help stop cyberbullying and um, what this guy has done and stood for. Encouraging other people to defame me and contact my employer and make up false accusations against me. Like, there are multiple charges here. <laughs> you realize that, right? Link to the court docket is above. Uh, 
Uh, can you repost it? Sorry, it's just, uh... Because I'll, I'll paste that into the chat. Or not in the chat. I'll post that into the browser. Link to the court docket is up above for the EPO. Uh, and then obviously the last one. Jason Jacoby calls into a NASCAR talk show under my name. Austin, Nevada. Hello. So what he did is he took my name and where Darian Gilliam, Black Flags Matter, used to live, and just called into Dave Moody's show and was like, hey, I'm Austin Naganowski from Las Vegas, Nevada. And whoever was working the switchboard was like, okay. Hey, Dave. Um, hey. I don't I don't understand why they they took the rebel flag away, but they're allowing the, the gay pride flag. I, I love people, but... I got a rebel flag outside my house, and it don't cause no harm. But it doesn't. I don't want to. Who? It. it how, how many of your African American friends say it causes no harm? And honestly, like I really don't like the call. I don't think it's all that funny. I'm more pissed that he called in under my name because again, it's it's cumulative, right? So, again, Q&A period at this point. This is what the folder looks like. There should be multiple charges as far as I'm concerned. Like, this is this is ridiculous, the fact that... The fact that, like, we're going on month eight and, like, nothing tangible has been done yet. Uh, can you see the link? I'm not sure if the link's actually going through. The link is unfortunately not going through. Uh, I'll just say send me the link on Instagram. Yeah, this is definitely Austin. Yeah, I really don't know how, like, nothing's been done. Again, the excuse I've been given is they can't figure out which jurisdiction should be responsible for it. So the cops kind of go back and forth between, well, you should call EPS, or you should you should chase this up with the Georgia law enforcement, or wherever this guy is, or you should do something civilly about this. And then, you know, I, I wait the week for, for, you know, my free consultation with a law firm who actually gets back to me. And they're like, no, this is criminal. You don't really need to hire a lawyer. Like, this is enough to, to get this guy charged for a lot of shit. And it just goes in circles like that, like, for months. So, like, as far as I'm concerned, it's it's really... It's, it's really annoying. It's like, we have all these, like, uh, precautions set up for, like, what happens if you end up getting stalked online and, and shit like this, because, like, because this isn't, this isn't uncommon. Like, this happens a lot. It happens to a lot of girls, right? You know, especially with, like, online dating and shit. But when you actually try and be like, okay, I'm going to compile my evidence. I'm going to go to the police about this. And, like, this is, this is very clear-cut harassment. Everyone who sat through the stream is like, there are, like, five different charges this guy could get, get, fucked, uh, get fucked with here. Right? And, and for it to be just, like, stuck in the mud and not... I don't want to say nothing happening, because, like, some cops are, like, taking it upon themselves to, like, figure out what can be done. But, like, you, you honestly can't tell me this took eight months. Do you think his bond will get revoked? It already has been revoked, from what I understand. It's just no one's gone and arrested him, which is just weird. There we go, got a request. Hey! This is going to be pretty interesting. Someone actually found the Hall County Court System docket. Hopefully this doesn't, like, fuck up my stream or anything. Uh, hope this works. So we're going to go to the Hall County Court webpage. Wow, there it is. So, thank you to, uh, fuck, what was your name? I'm sorry. I was going too quick through that. 
thanks to Russell Despain, who's just hanging out in our chat. This is the online court docu document, or online court docket, I should say. Of uh, his high school teacher getting a restraining order against him. Uh, parties, Joni is the plaintiff, uh, Jason's the defendant, uh, he was served, uh, okay, this is backwards, I guess, filed the first day of December of this year, that sounds about right, uh, he was served on December 1st, and then started with, like, the actual court papers, with the order going into action. On December 15th, 2021. Man, this is way too close to where I live. Would Jason be using your name to count as identity theft? I don't really don't know. I don't think it's severe enough, you know? Because it was just a first name. But, like, he very obviously told whoever was working the switchboard, like, it was me, right? But it's not like Sirius X from Channel 90 knows Austin Ogonoski is a creep. They just think it's some dude named Austin in Nevada which is not enough for, like, defamation, but, like, cumulatively with all this other stuff he's done, you can make the, uh, you can make the argument that, like, it's, it's just more evidence of, like, stalking, right? Whoever found this is a legend, yeah. So, yeah, there's the proof that, that, uh, oh, Jesus Christ, Arian. Holy shit, thank you. Thank you for the uh, the $20. Yeah, I, I, I would say compiling all this shit is worth $20. And unfortunately, this is this is probably, if, if shit gets rolling, this might be what you have to do, is build a folder like this. I don't know how much of the stream you've watched, but th thank you so much for, for the super chat. Uh, it's probably worth watching this cumulatively from front to back at some point when the VOD's up. Yeah, and Russell, Russell also brings us a good point. He didn't use my identity for personal game. He just gave him a fake name to call into a radio show, which is like, cumulatively, it's a big deal. But like the actual event itself, it's like, well, anyone can call into a radio show and just give a burner name. Like, it's not a bad thing. I'm a bit of a legal eagle, clearly. Yeah. So again, I'll I'll take questions now. Again, the big question people ask me is like, why hasn't anything been done? And again, it's just a jurisdiction thing. Because I'm in Canada and Jason's located in Georgia, both police departments are kind of unsure of who should start criminal proceedings. And there's also questions as to whether this is seminal or criminal. Criminal, After all these months, which there shouldn't be, and I do get dicked around a lot by both entities where I go to, go to lawyers and they're like, no, you should just go to the police because this is pretty obviously stalking. And then the cops, you know, I don't want to show, show emails, but they're like, hey, like, we really don't know how to proceed with this, so, like, you're best going after this guy in a civil suit, but the problem is, civil litigation, for those who don't know, like, to hire a, uh, a lawyer and have him on what's called retainer, just, just at the ready to do work for you on a per hourly basis, is $3,500 straight up, and that's literally, if I were to get them, if I were to, to hire a lawyer to send Jason's mom a nasty letter, or, like, Jason himself a nasty letter that he could potentially just ignore, would be a minimum of $3,500. Okay. However, let's say it actually does go to court. You know, this could eat up like thirty grand. <laughs> Just take this to pay whatever is needed. So probably rent. Have you tried to reach out to the DA regarding his ongoing case in Athens County to see if your accusations can be added to his case? I've really done everything. Uh, I have reached out to pretty much everyone regarding this, and it's been extensive. Like, I know my parents are kind of like, hey, like. Like, what do you do all day, you know? Like, they're, they're kind of concerned, but, like, they're not really on board with this whole, like, I should pursue this guy, you know, and, and get what I'm owed out of him. But they're like, hey, what do, you, what do you do all day? Like, what have you been done to be proactive about this and stuff like that? And, like, I have emailed, like, stalking support, like, websites being like, hey, what the fuck do I do about this? I've emailed, like, uh, like the domestic violence group in his county or I think it's the one that Mackenzie was actually, like, getting services from, to be like, hey, like, I'm dealing with the same guy, too, and, like, what can I do? I've emailed trying to get free legal advice from from Hall County's uh, court system, because they offer that for, like, protective orders, uh, and they've kind of, like, 
stiff arm me and they're like, well, no, like we can't really help you because you're you're out of state. I've emailed basically every police agency that like I could possibly talk to that could possibly help. Uh, I've order, emailed like a ton of different attorneys. Uh, I've emailed all the all the various people Jason has stalked and like mentioned on his website, which I've gone over in one of the folders. I think it was like folder eight or no folder nine. I've followed up with them and been like, hey, I know Jason's been after you. Uh, what have what have you done to take care of him? And like, can you get can you give me some help? So I absolutely have contacted Joni and been like, hey, like what what have you done to take care of him? Uh, and she she was somewhat helpful, but unfortunately, like again, with me being out of state, it's hard to find something to do. Uh, some of the race teams I've reached reached out to because like let's be honest, Chase Briscoe knows who this guy is, right? Uh, I've reached out to. Uh, Hendrick Motorsports, and I actually got a call from Hendrick back. I don't think a lot of people know this, and I guess I'll bury this info deep inside the stream, so it's kind of hard to access, but I did get a call in September from a 704 number from a guy who claimed to be with the security division at Hendrick Motorsports, and he just asked about Jason Jacoby, and was like, hey, like, how much of a threat is this guy? And I followed up about a month later being like, hey, did you do anything? And I don't think they took any action, but, like, he is on their radar. Uh, I'm pretty sure, again, I, I've sent Stuart Haas an email, because I know Chase Briscoe was liking a few of my tweets, just to kind of show that he was, like, around. Uh, fuck, who else? Pretty much everyone you could think of. Again, like, <clears throat> there's a lot of, like, stalking support websites out there that I, like, I would call. So, like, it'd be, like, some random girl in, her, in Vermont who, like, got stalked and then started up, like, a non-profit, I would send off an email being, like, how would you deal with this? I would go on, like, like, uh, Reddits or, like, uh, support groups, you know, there's, there's support forms for everything, right? And I'd just give, like, a quick rundown of the situation and be, like, okay, what did you do to deal with this? I would go on, like, legal advice rights and be, like, okay, this happened to me, uh, what should I do legally? And some of the advice given was actually really, really good and was useful. I just can't elaborate on it. Are you aware that JRM knows about Jason? Yeah, everyone does. Everyone in the NASCAR industry knows about him. Again, I, that was confirmed to me by Hendrick Motorsports. I don't remember the name of the guy who called, but I still have that on my phone, like his number saved. <coughs> but JRM itself is a division of Hendrick. I don't think people are aware of that, but it's, it's technically like a Hendrick satellite team, if that makes sense. So, like, they're aware of it. And their, their main concern was wh whether Jason was going to show up to, like, an actual cup race and, like, hurt Junior or hurt, like, a crew member or something like that. And he's like, we actually do deal with it, like, pretty often. Because, like, people get drunk as fuck at NASCAR races, right? So, like, after, you know, 10 o'clock when the race is over and fans are just, like, stumbling around the garage area, you know, there's drunks that are like, you wrecked my driver, I'm going to fight you, right? So they have to have a whole security division to, like, deal with that, right? Uh, I really wish, I again, I wrote down, like, everyone I contacted, but it's it's pretty much everyone that I could have gone to who, like, even remotely could have helped. I've gone to. Like, I've been pretty proactive about this, as you can tell. Uh, the best advice I've gotten was back when I had my PRC uh, website up and I did, like, a, a piece on this. A comment a guy left was just on one of the articles. He's like, you need to do X, Y, and Z. Uh, I followed that advice, and it was, like, bang on. And it was, like, the most helpful advice I've ever been given. He went to Atlanta in the summer, I think, with his new girlfriend. Yes. Was the guy from HMS that called you his name Kevin? I don't remember his name. Jerem has been a Hendrick spinoff since their founding. Yeah, so that explains why why it would have been, Hendri been a Hendrick guy that called me. Yeah, fuck, I've, I've emailed pretty much everyone. Again, the district attorney I've emailed. Uh, uh, there's, there's other people. Like, both courts that are dealing with him, both Hall County and athens Clark County, have emailed being like, hey, I'm from Canada, you know, like, I'm aware you're, like, trying to press charges on this guy, but, like, I'm dealing with the same thing. I just send him this Google Drive, right? Everyone that could have been contacted has been contacted, and again, I'm just shocked that, like, so few people know how to deal with it. Because you'd think, especially in 2022, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? In 2022, it would be established that, like, people stalk each other online and, like, this shit happens. It's not, it's not regular, but, like, it does. It happens. And I, I have a lot more info, like, saved and archived and, like, sorted than, than most ever will. Because it's just, it's me. Like, I'm pretty thorough when I do anything. 
And, like, if this isn't enough, like, what is? I, I Honestly, I don't even think he, he gave me his name, to be honest with you. But yeah, it's been everyone. Like I even I even called the Domino's he worked at because I was like, hey, I wonder if like they they you know took legal action against him because he kept mentioning their name a bunch on his blog, and I ended up speaking with someone who worked with him. He was like, no, like he actually apparently when he quit Domino's, it was like it was pretty clean, and he didn't do anything like bad, I guess, on, during his time at Domino's. But like that the whole the whole uh, workplace is aware that like he's he's like nuts afterwards. Like, it's, it's a story that's circulated around this town pretty commonly now. Dude, there are 70 people watching this shit? Holy fuck, I, I didn't even look at the, uh... At the, uh, the view count, I was just so busy going through this, right? So, anyways, like, if you, do, if you guys don't have, like, a lot of questions... Like, I'll, I'll kill the stream, because it's a nice length. The VOD will be up, so you can watch it and go through it. Again, like, unfortunately, this is something Darian will have to do. This is something that, like, Mackenzie has already done. This is something Joni's probably had to do. It's probably has a, a drive or something saved similar to this. But, it, it, again, if this ever happens to you, and, and Jason might not be taken care of for a while... They might just delay the trial another month, and he might be out for another two months and go after people like the Iceberg or Danny, Danny Baldwin or just random NASCAR YouTubers. If, if, if he comes after you or, like, let's say further on down the road, like, you deal with a girlfriend who's being nuts towards you online, or, like, this happens again and there's a second Jason Jacoby, you know, ten years from now on iRacing 3, you know? And he does the same shit to people. Like, you have to put something together like this. This is what it looks like. This is how you have to structure your folders. Sounds like a broken record, but there are times when you need a lawyer, and you unfortunately probably need a lawyer. Can Jerry, Jason's parents be sued for anything like neglect? Well, again, I mentioned that in some of these later folders, such as uh, parents seemingly tasked with keeping them away from technology. If there is a conservatorship thing that's been signed and put into place where, like, his parents are responsible for his money, or, like, they've agreed... You know, to keep a watchful eye over him, and, and they pay his bills and stuff like that. Because there are various levels of, like, conservatorship or guardianship. And it's found that, like, they knew he was harassing people under their roof, on their internet connection. That they were screening his blog posts and determining what he was allowed to post and what wasn't. And he ended up harassing people and stalking people. And it's, like, a pretty wide array of people. They could probably be held responsible for it. The thing is, and I will leave, leave you guys with this as a final talking point, uh, my personal hope is that guys like Darian Gilliam or Danny B are able to get this on the attention of NASCAR, because I will say this, you know, to, to kind of end this stream, uh, Jason seems to just go after people for no reason. For example, again, we go to this other folder of sending harassing emails to all these different people, from, like, high school teachers to, like, random people in iRacing to, like, Alpine Stars to Dominoes to what you guys have seen recently with, like, Black Flags Matter and Danny B and Eric E. Step. He goes after people at random. So right now, like, if you're a content creator in, in like, the NASCAR kind of subspace or you're just a kid playing iRacing, this guy may potentially stalk you. And, like, send crazy shit to your employer, try and get you fired, uh, post a bunch of, sh of shit on social media that might get you in trouble, like, with your school. Because some schools have, like, zero tolerance for, like, social media shit. So, like, obviously Darian's not going to get kicked, kicked out of his university for, you know, like, some crazy guy on YouTube saying he's a pedophile. But, like, there are some schools that will. Right? So you can make the argument that, like, hey, kids aren't safe because this is going on. So, like, if you just like NASCAR, you go to the races or you play iRacing or you make cool little NASCAR videos in your spare time, there's this guy who's going to end up stalking you. And it's going to really fuck up your personal life. Especially if he decides he's really angry at you because you're not promoting charity water enough. So now you have all these kids in the line of fire who are just, like, hanging out on YouTube making, like, goofy little NASCAR videos about their favorite driver... And they're now in the line of fire of a stalker. This guy's also got a history of, like, domestic violence and stuff like that. 
So, like, is it safe taking your kids to an event at, at Atlanta Motor Speedway if he's there? Is he going to, like, is he going to start, like, hurting people? I mean, this guy will drive his truck into a pole at, like, 60 miles an hour. So, what's he going to do at a race if he's angry that NASCAR is selling pepperoni pizza to the fans? I mean, he, he tried to fucking junk his truck because he couldn't deal with delivering that pizza at Domino's. So, like, what's he do next? So, NASCAR has to deal with potentially having this, like, stalker and, like, potential, like, you know, like, predator in the community. And all these kids who, who they should be protecting are now just in this, like, line of fire, really. And, he, and he'll do this all the time on YouTube. Like, he chased after, like, this Caleb Hoffman kid who was just this, like, iRacing livery designer. Like, this young kid. And just said a bunch of shit about him. So. That's why I really hope NASCAR steps in. Because, like, this is now... This is not just an Austin Ogunowski versus Jason Jacoby thing. This is, like, he's going to chase after anyone who's just, like, in the NASCAR content creation sphere. And go after their employers. And go after their schools that they're at. And that's not fair to NASCAR fans. So, like, is NASCAR comfortable with that? We're like, hey, they have this great... They have this whole NASCAR Discord they created. They have this little NASCAR content creation sphere where some guys are actually on the on the company's payroll because of some of the videos they make. Like, I think someone mentioned that, like, Eric Estep is technically, like, an official NASCAR influencer. So, like, if, if other young kids get into this world, right now the situation is, hey, like, that's cool, like, you can make shitty NASCAR videos... But, like, you're going to be stalked by Jason Jacoby, and, and, and they're just not going to do anything about it? That's what NASCAR kind of has to factor in when dealing with this, and that's why I wish they would step in and kind of either either take, take some sort of action against him, or, I hate bringing this up, but potentially get the FBI involved, because, again, this does cross state and international lines at this point. And if they're willing to bring out, like, 17 FBI agents to investigate a garage door pull, they can probably investigate or dedicate some time to a guy who's, like, actually stalking people and, you know, fucking up people's lives. Like, think about that. Like, how many cops or how many FBI agents did they send to Talladega last April? Or when was that? Two years ago? One year or two years ago? For a garage door pull? But now we have a guy who's, like, sitting on YouTube, like, making threats, you know, to, like, various NASCAR content creators who are just, like, hanging out, minding their own business, who don't even know... Who who he is, really. Like, Eric Estep, David Land have never mentioned this guy in public. Right? And he just wakes up and decides to go after them. He goes after, like, kids who are making, like, liveries on iRacing. And he makes threats towards them. He makes threats towards his, like, high school teachers. He says, if you do this for me, you do this for God. And then lists all of his teachers. Can we at least get one FBI agent on that? Or does he have to make a garage door pull <laughs> and tie it in the shape of a noose, right? So, again, I really hope NASCAR steps in. I hope people from, like, the NASCAR industry are watching this and are like, hey, maybe we should do something. Because, like, I don't, I don't want to wake up, like, six months from now and find out that, like, he drove his car into, like, the front of a Domino's and, like, killed two people. Because this is more or less how the story of Elliot Roger began. Where, like, a bunch of people online would see his, like, bodybuilding posts. And are like, wow, this dude's a creep. Like, this dude has, like, mass shooter vibes, all, like, all over him. And, like, everything he posts is just really disturbing. And then we woke up one day and it's like, oh, so there was this shooting in Isla Vista. And it's this guy who had this weird YouTube account where he made crazy YouTube videos about how he was upset that woman rejected him and... and basically, like, laid out his whole fucking manifesto of how much he hated women before, like, going on a killing spree. So now we have this guy who's, like, actively stalking people and harassing, like, at least 15 to 20 different people. And we have, like, over 400 YouTube videos where he's just being, like, a complete nut job. Like, where do you think this path leads? Like, we really think he's just gonna sit there and do nothing? But thankfully, because a lot of us have documented it, and uh, this has been a point of contention on Twitter for some people, 
a lot of people say, like, hey, we should ignore this. We should just, like, let this go away. Well, first of all, no. Like, some of us got fucked over enough where we probably do deserve restitution of some kind and charges pressed. But, like, let's say let's say Jason slips through the, the uh, cracks and it becomes another Waukesha incident. If he ends up hurting people, here's the thing. Any of his victims' families, if, if it does get that ugly, now have this massive wave of evidence that they can present to the court system and to law enforcement that, like, hey, people knew about this guy. And tried to do something. In fact, they basically screamed at police that, hey, like, you, you really need to, like, look at this seriously. And they were ignored. Or, like, especially recently, like, hey, this guy actually had, you know, a bunch of bond conditions saying that he wasn't allowed to post on YouTube. That he wasn't allowed to talk about his ex-girlfriend. And they should have arrested him basically on the spot. Right? I think I mentioned that in one of my videos. The moment he started posting on his blog back in July last year was like an immediate immediate violation of his bond. He should have been hauled back to jail. Right? So if he does go out and like end up hurting someone, which I hopefully, you know, hopefully isn't the case. Hopefully just, you know, he gets hauled off and sentenced for some of the stuff he did to Mackenzie and people like myself and Darian and then like that's the end of it and we can just like move on from this thing. But, like, if, if worse comes to worse and he does go out in, like, a blaze of glory or something like that, like, whoever he ends up hurting, their families now have this massive paper trail to follow. And that family can now say, hey, look, people actually did know about him. They were basically kids crowd, you know, crowdsourcing an investigation on Twitter and YouTube who were actually quite thorough in it, as you can see here. And nothing was done. So at that point, the family, instead of just chasing after Jason's family for money, they can start going after the judicial system in Georgia. They can start going after law enforcement in Georgia. Because all of us have a record of like the exact days we talked to the cops, what was said to us, uh, uh, the amount of time, you know, the amount of time that progressed between like the initial report and like how little was actually done. What did David Land do wrong? Nothing. Jason basically just has a bunch of, you know, NASCAR videos recommended to him on his on his main feed. And then just whoever he sees that day or that hour, he makes a video about saying how they're horrible for not promoting charity water. So again, like, there are, like, kids who are just, like, 18 or 19 years old just, like, making shitty NASCAR videos. Who Jason might just, like, wake up one day and be like, this person's horrible, I'm going to call their employer and get them fired. And it's, like, some kid working in, like, a, like a McDonald's or, like, a warehouse or something. Anyways, I think that's all the questions that I could possibly take from this. Thanks for sticking around. If you caught, you know, this this stream midway through, I do encourage you to watch the whole thing. I go through most, or, well, actually I should say, I go through all my folders in detail. I show you a couple of examples from each one. Take care, guys. It's midnight here. I'm going to have a drink. And uh, stay frosty, etc.